Tyler Batson became the first rookie for the Rockies to ever throw a shutout at home. What a gem it was. A three-hit shutout as the Rockies won three to nothing. A standing ovation well deserved as Tyler Matzik now has run together a string of 21 shutout innings. Tough act to follow after what Matzik did last night. Rockies game two against the Padres, but they have a good guy to follow up. Matzik, Jorge De La Rosa on the mound tonight. With that, we welcome you upstairs on a beautiful Saturday evening. Hope everybody's doing well. Glad you're along with George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman. Matzik was something special last night. You know he was, and what I liked is he pitched all the way through the game, and when he did have a difficulty, which wasn't a whole lot, in the ninth inning, he just kind of took a deep breath, exhaled, and here we go, and he finished that job up on a three-hit shutout. You got to go all the way back to 2010, is that right? 2011, which I've seen, man, that a long time ago. So it was a, a nice welcome to see that on the field last night. And Jorge De La Rosa, as we told you yesterday, was signed to a two-year contract extension in the last 48 hours that will keep him in a Rockies uniform. Uh, great move by the organization. After all, he's 44 and 14 in this ballpark, nine and two this year. Yeah, not scared of the yard, that's for sure. That's one of the biggest things about him when he's pitching at Coors Field. He utilizes the changeup. He utilizes his off-speed pitches, but when you can throw 95, 90 to 95, it really makes everything else that much better. Look at this, 9 and 2 in 13 games for the 319 earned run average. I mean, it is total dominance in a ballpark that everybody around the world says, oh, you can't pitch a course. Well, there's a guy that can, and I'm glad that the organization took the initiative to lock him up for two more and make him a part of what they're trying to accomplish here. Well, De La Rosa and Matzik will be fixtures in the rotation next year. There are a couple of fixtures in the lineup that uh, Mark Stat has some interesting notes on. DJ LeMahieu and Charlie Blackman. That'll be next as we prepare you for first pitch tonight. Rockies and Padres.
Padres and the Rockies with game two of this three game weekend series here in September. Had a conversation today as we get you out to center field with the manager Walt Weiss and I was talking about runs scored versus RBIs runs batted in and specifically when you're talking about your leadoff hitter in Charlie Blackman he said you know what I'll take them both they both count the same when I asked Charlie Blackman he said definitely RBIs want to show you something about runs batted in when you look at the leaders by batting order position in all of baseball Charlie Blackman as a leadoff hitter leads the way with 64 and down in the eight hole DJ LeMay who tied with Zach Cosart of the Reds with 30 you see some familiar names in the middle of the lineup that's obvious but Charlie Blackman is knocking in runs about as much as he is scoring them and that's a one to one ratio that is impressive out of the top of the order he has 70 runs scored and of course if you can get 30 plus RBIs and you will out of your eight hole hitter and DJ LeMay you you will take that game in and game out and that's why the Rockies offense has been prolific this season it is year in year out but these two guys should be here for the foreseeable future when we come back it's the Rockies and the Padres. Jorge De La Rosa, the Rockies ace. Is everything going to come up Rosa's again? Well, he's 8-3 all time against San Diego. We sure hope so. First pitch straight ahead here on Root Sports. Colorado Rockies baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by your neighborhood Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By Anova Cancer Care, taking a novel approach to cancer care. Learn more about prostate cancer treatment at anovacc.com. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. Well, a little overcast earlier this morning, but it's been a lovely day for the most part here in the Mile High City. Jorge De La Rosa making his team leading 29th start of the year, looking for victory number 14. And his first subject will be the former Seattle Mariner, Abraham Almonte. He came down in the Chris DeNorfia deal. Here's the rest of Bud Black's lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You can find our fares online only at southwest.com. Reimer Liriano was hitting at the bottom of the lineup last night. He's near the top tonight. Then Yanervis Solarte. Jed Jericho's had a lot of success, 7 for 11 against De La Rosa. He'll bat cleanup. Yasmani Grandal, Tommy Medica again at first. Cameron Maven once again at center. And Alexi Amarista, in the absence of Everett Cabrera, has become the everyday shortstop for Bud Black. Joe Wheeland 
making his first appearance in more than two years. More on that in a little bit as you look at Jorge. And for a deeper look at his numbers, brought to you by Anova Cancer Care, non-surgical treatment of prostate cancer. Visit AnovaCC.com. Here's George again. So 160 and two-thirds innings thrown, only 57 walks given up. And I think where you start to put him out in that category of great left-handers in the game right now, Left-handed hitters uh, hitting against National League starters. Kershaw, 174. De La Rosa, 195. Tells you some big numbers uh, of what they've been able to do. Twelve of the last 13 games that he has started, the Rockies have won. De La Rosa has gone 8-1 and one with a 4.04 .04 earned run average. Here's the Rockies defense presented by Excel Energy. Visit responsiblebynature.com today to learn more. Dickerson, Stubbs, and Blackman. Arenado, Rutledge, LeMahieu, Morneau, McHenry. 3 nothing shutout. You get another run out there. That's the same lineup as last night. So we're ready to go. With El Monte stepping in. The Rockies done a nice job of late. On their home diamond, they've won nine of their last 13 at Coors Field. They got off to a tremendous start at Coors Field the first six weeks of the season, and then they struggled to win here and obviously on the road in June and July. Jorge always very deliberate. He is ready now, the first pitch of the ball game. And chopped to short, setting his feet, getting behind the baseball as Rutledge won out. On pace, George, on pace for a major league record. That's right, three pitches, three outs. You'd love it. Let's do it, Jorge. Let's go, infield. Tweet your questions using the hashtag to Toyota Talk and watch as we answer your questions during the fifth inning of every game. So, again, tweet your questions to hashtag Toyota Talk. Reimer Liriano had one of the three hits last night against Matzik. Just 103 pitches in that gem thrown by Tyler. And the fastball's down low, 1 0. Matzik in his last three. We mentioned that 21 innings straight without allowing a run. He's 3 0 with an 078, the league hitting 177 against him. That covers 23 innings. 2 0. Dougie did a little research. The Rockies came to be back in 1993, as all of you know. And since that time, there have only been 51 three hit were fewer complete game shutouts by a rookie. And now Tyler's on that list. Two and one. Yeah, just a pleasure to watch because he pounded his own last night. As you look through the uh, Colorado Rockies history, low hit games, Jeff Francis. 2008, a couple of hits given up against a very good St. Louis ball club. And then Tyler Massey with his three hits last night. fouled off Padres conversely were shut out for the 17th time this year but blacks team can pitch they really struggle offensively now they can't pitch and they got a bullpen to back up things and last night Stoltz perfectly perfect example of it 14 of his 28 starts now they've scored zero or one run that's why six and 16 you look at that you look at that record you go oh wow then all of a sudden you see how many runs are not scoring for him. At least amount in baseball at 2.96 runs per uh, support for Stoltz. They are scoring more. That's why they're 25 and 20 since the All-Star break. And they've played pretty good baseball. Chopped foul. Rockies with the shutout last night. That was their third shutout of the year. And again, first individual shutout.
Base hit up the middle for Reimer Liriano. That'll bring up John Harvey Solarte with one out and one on. Time for the Steel T Heating and Air Cool Stat. Never trip charge. That's a $69 value. Steel T, the T stands for trust. Go to Steel T. Dot com consecutive starts at Coorsville with a winning decision. Well, De La Rosa, not surprising, has all the long streaks, and he's uh, in the midst <laughs> of one right now. Yeah, pretty long, isn't it? Last six at Coors, six and 283 The opposition's hit 245 against. Henry getting an early workout. A lot of balls have bounced. Blocking drills. That's all. Just doing a little early work. It's not a big deal. By the way, uh, in the South Atlantic League, the Asheville Tourists were able to finish that game. It was suspended last night. They ended up winning two to one. They are up to zero. Tulsa won last night also. Yeah, they need to win tonight. If they win tonight, a uh, pretty good opportunity for them to they'll clinch that first round and then they'll have to play either. I love it. Taylor made, baby. Taylor made. Yeah. Four, six, three. As easy as that. Taylor Rosa with a very nice beginning. To the bottom of the first inning, Rockies looking to get a quick start against Joe Whelan. Charlie Blackman, uh, we're inside the bat rack. Charlie picking out uh, his weapon of choice. That's that's truly a hidden camera. Yes, it is. Candid camera. Well, no, we'll find out if they find it pretty soon. If you find tape over it about the third inning. Exactly. <laughs> so Charlie will be number one. Charlie's played now in 15 straight games. It's the longest stretch for a Rocky. The reason we bring that up is 19 years ago today is when Cal Ripken ran past the Iron Horse, Luke Eric. Southwest batting order. Charlie will be followed by Drew Stubbs in Walt Weiss's lineup. Justin Morneau next, then Nolan Arenado, Corey Dickerson, Michael McHenry, Josh Rutledge, DJ LeMayhew. Drew Stubbs a home run last night. Nolan Arenado a home run last night. The Rockies 3-0 victory. Joe Whelan's a great story. He has not pitched in the big league since 2012. More than two years ago, he had Tommy John surgery. And it's taken him a while to get back. But his first pitch and his return is in there. Strike one. And there's his Inova numbers. Well, he spent most of the time in AA and AAA this season with their San Antonio ball club. And over that span, he uh, struggled a little bit. Two and three overall record, nine starts, struck out 36, only walked six. Five major league games that he's pitched in. He's 0 and 4, so he's looking for his first major league win. Yeah, and the Padres are 0 and 5 in the uh, five games he started. Fastball outside. Those numbers brought to you by Inova Cancer Care. Non surgical treatment of prostate cancer. Visit InovaCC.com. He got to the big leagues in a hurry because he's missed more than two years and he's only 24. 
traded for Matt Adams from the Texas Rangers. Robbie Erlin, who is in their bullpen right now on the left side uh, at the big league level. Shallow center. Maybe it started back. Now he's coming on, and he has that good makeup speed. We'll go back to 2012 and look at this young right-hander when he first came to the big leagues. Uh, you know, came out pretty good hard throw. Throw the ball in the low to mid 90s after the Tommy John surgery and some setbacks. He's finally worked his way back. Let's start against Philadelphia. See that ten point control on the outer half, and yet to look for that first big league win. Twenty four strikeouts. He doesn't walk people. We saw that earlier. Six walks so far in thirty six innings in his rehab. Safe. Yep. That's just a flat infield hit. Amarista fielded <laughs> it cleanly, <laughs> threw it cleanly. Drew Stubbs just fast. Yeah, I love it. You know he couldn't have done any better, Armarista, unless he just had ended up having a, you know, a Simmons-type arm to be able to make this play, or Tulowitzki-type arm. Otherwise, he's not going to get him anyway. But he did everything he's supposed to do. Oh well, yeah. Bud and must have saw the same replay we saw. Yeah, Bud's coming out. But if he re if he does challenge this, he's done to what the sixth inning. It depends if he's right? successful or not. Right. I think feelings uh, unfortunately on that replay it might be successful. We'll look at this again when it hits the leather and where the where the foot is foot's coming down down down. I don't know if the heels on there. It's the only thing. They're going to go give it a peek though. Well the good news he was called safe on the field. Glove I don't know you know. Well we see the ball hit when the when the glove closes. Maybe on the bag or close enough that they can't overturn it. Yeah, because I mean it's a, it's about hitting the leather before he gets there. This manager's challenge brought to you by Subaru's eyesight driver assist technology, a vigilant safety feature that gives peace of mind to every drive. Yeah, the point I was trying to make about the challenge with Bud, if he loses it, I mean you got to be pretty sure that you're going to do this because otherwise you just got to bite your lip for. Quite a few innings if you end up losing this thing. Yeah, I, you know, I go back to it quick. Holy yeah, really cow. Quick. Uh, real quick. One guy's already off. Called him out. Ooh, calling him out. All right. So two outs, nobody on. And that'll bring up Justin Morneau. The, the thing about it is. And I remember talking to Walt about this in spring training. If you think a play was wrong. Called wrong, and, and you get visual evidence from your video coordinator. You might as well go for it, even if it's early in the ball game, because who knows? There may not be another play that arises, and, and that could affect the outcome. It could happen very early. You can't say, "Well, probably something will happen in the fifth inning." I want to save it. No, and I understand that. One ball, one strike on Justin. Boy, he is feasted on Padres pitching this year. He's feasted on everything. Uh, do you looking at those road home numbers for him? 308 at home, 311 on the road. Pretty consistent. How about this, George? He leads the National League with a 334 batting average against right handed pitching. Bud Black was asked last night about Morneau and the success he's having. He said, I saw him when I was the pitching coach with the Angels when he first came up. He said, he could flat hit then. He could hit for power. He had a great idea of what he's doing, and he's just gotten better. So nothing he's doing surprises me, but reminded everybody that he was in the American League and saw him quite a bit when he first arrived. Outside two and two. Or no 372 average against the Padres this season. And there's the list of guys that have hit righty so well. This is going to be a base hit. They had a semi shift on and Justin found a hole the other way. That'll get Aaron out of the plate with two outs. Let's take a look at the defensive alignment for the Padres tonight brought to you by Excel Energy. Visit responsiblebynature.com to learn more. Amarista again at shortstop. Solarte at third. 
the outfield the same as last night. The only change, Osmani Grandal doing the catching. Rene Rivera was catching last night. Arenado lines it to deep center field. May have been going back. He's going to get there. And spin off the wall. Arenado gave it a ride. May have been chased it down. We'll go to the second. No score. field 44 and 14 well Tyler Matzik with the complete game shutout last night he certainly has taken notice of what Jorge's done at home what I've been able to do is just sit back and watch him and um, you know see what he's he's doing how he's doing it you know how he's successful here and it's it's rubbed off on me and um, you know I feel like there's a lot more to learn and and um, you know he's, he's he's helped me along the way George, maybe you can help me present this to the audience because he also said, you know, there's a feel for pitching. That's an intangible. And he watches Jorge. Jorge has a feel for his pitch, the batter, the catcher. And that's hard to describe. Maybe maybe you can describe how you felt when you were on the hill. Well, I think what you do, you look at a certain pitch that may work for Jorge, that if it's a changeup, then for Mats, it gets the curveball. Or it's the slider. Something, one of the off speed that help you go through. And a feel to pitch is... Having the confidence and being comfortable on two one counts to throw something of one of your secondary pitches. And Jorge's a, a master at that. And, and I think that's why Tyler, uh, when he goes seven innings, he's 5 0 with an 097 earned run average. Are you kidding me? And he likes to work deep into the games. You know, there was an article the other day talking about worrying uh, or worrying about, I should say, uh, the innings on him. And he's like, hey, I want the baseball. I'm fine. That was evident last night. He was 93 95 in the eighth inning last night. Yeah, his last pitch of the eighth inning was 95 for a punch out. So, I mean, he was, he, he's got plenty of arm strength and plenty of a, plenty left in the tank. Three and one on Jed Jerko, seven for 11. Against Jorge De La Rosa. Yeah, I wonder one game though in San Diego was like four for five. I think when he first uh, went back in the other day, I think it was four for five. He just missed this one, I think. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Dickerson goes back almost to the warning track. Who wants tacos? Remember, if the Rockies score seven or more during any game, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six. Get your Rockies taco special. Live Moss and Taco Bell. Yasmani Grandal. Line to center field. 
Drew Stubbs is there. Two outs. Tommy Medica out of Santa Clara will be next. Game two of a nine game trip for the Padres. It's kind of an easy one travel wise, George, because they, they go to Arizona, they go to LA. Pretty easy. Yeah. And it used to be, I haven't checked lately with some of the Padres, it used to be that if they wanted to, they could drive home in between games when they played in L.A. Mm -hmm. I know Adrian it's Gonzalez. Kind of, who kind of used depends to play on where you live. I mean, I think it depends on where you live and how far, how long the drive is. For me as a player, um, you know, if it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday game, I might go home Friday night, but I'm not Saturday with a day game coming up. One and two on Medica. Medica is in one of those slumps that uh, keeps you up staring at the ceiling in the evening. 0 for 28 with 14 punch outs. He's not had a hit since August the 14th. How you doing, Tommy? Well, I'm 0 for three weeks. How you think I'm doing? <laughs> This game will do that to you. I tell you, you know what? When, you, when you're going bad, everybody knows how to fix you. The guy at the grocery store, the gas station, the teacher when you tell, drop your kids off, everybody knows how to fix you. All of them got the answers. And when you're going good, they all said, yeah, look what I did. Shoot, I saw Dougie talking to him before the game today. Dougie, were you down talking to him in the locker room, giving him a little advice? Shaking his head now. One, two. Just a little disappointed and Lindsay went to Houston today because I was looking for some more of that banana nut bread she made last night. <laughs> went to go see mom and dad. It's time for a shower. Another baby. Isn't it amazing you have a baby, Doug, and the next thing you know, you're, everybody's got baby showers. Yeah. Well, I came to yours. <laughs> yeah, and you're getting the same gift I didn't want. You gave me. <laughs> yeah, the re-gift. Two outs, nobody on with the second inning. Tommy Medica behind one and two to Jorge De La Rosa. Now he strikes out for the 15th time in his last 29 at bats. First strikeout of the evening for De La Rosa.
Corey Dickerson, George. Switching batting gloves. He'll be first, then Mike McHenry, Josh Rutledge. Tweet us your Rockies fan photos. Use the hashtag SEAL fan photo for an opportunity to have it shown during an upcoming game brought to you by AT&T. Dickerson now at the plate against Joe Whelan. Joe gave up a hit in the first inning to Justin Morneau. That was it. Dickerson with 22 home runs. He's driven in 68. Trying to shave that outside corner. It's off the plate. Quinn Walcott's behind the plate tonight. C.B. Buckner at first, Dan Iasania is at second, and Adam Hamari is at third. Three and zero on Dickerson. Six for his last 14, including a couple home runs, a couple doubles. Yeah, I mentioned earlier he doesn't walk anybody. He walks six and in 36 innings. In his minor league uh, time this year, King's back with a strike here. 91 miles an hour. Been up to 94 in the game so far. Here's the 3 1 to Corey. And a called strike 3 and 2. Dickerson looks away. Yeah, if it is, it's a pitcher's pitch right on the corner on the knees appear to be low called a strike on the overhead. We'll take another look at it. It brushed the outer edge. Foul ground. It's playable. Almarista calls off the third baseman Solarte one out. So that'll bring up the catcher Mike McHenry. Done a real good job this year. 314. It was really come on, George. We just saw him. Buster Posey. Buster Posey swinging the bat like Buster Posey again. Well, money players typically play really good. This, this ball ball's hammered deep center field. Maven's not going to catch this one. Into the fountains for Mike McHenry on a line. His seventh home run. Rockies lead 1 0. Twenty three and seven the Rockies are when they scored first they've scored first and they did it in a big way 415 feet away from dead center home plate. And Henry gives it a ride made them give us a, a look as it lands with the ducks in center field. Strike on Rutledge now Grandal will go out got the crowd excited that was a line drive home run. They just put on the gear and go back and concentrate on the other half of your game, and that's catching Jorge. Look at this, look at the lineup, who they got coming up. Make sure where you are in the bottom third. Two and one on Rutledge. That's there. Two and two. Out at the BMW today, ran into uh, Seth Smith, a couple of his teammates early on. Getting a chance to take in a little golf. Well, Seth had a very productive year, signed a two year contract extension with the San Diego Padres. All that happened before Josh Burns was dismissed. Good for Seth, 279 average, 42 RBIs right now.
three and two. Joe Wheeland out of Reno, Nevada. High school player of the year in 2008 when he went in the fourth round of the Texas Rangers. And Rutledge draws a walk. He had signed with the late Tony Gwynn to play at San Diego State, but went the professional route. Rutledge with speed with one out. DJ LeMayhew coming up. Windshield damage, call SafeLight 303 287 5000 to make an appointment, or you can check them out online at safelight.com. DJ, like Justin Morneau, really hitting the Padres well this year. 386 average for LeMahieu, and last night he had a couple more hits. Scored one of the Rockies' runs also. Padres, actually, they're 8 and 7 against the Rockies this year, have pitched well all season against everybody, but. Against the Rockies, you can go back actually to September of last year. Last 16 meetings between these two clubs, the Rockies have hit just 249 against the Friars, and the uh, Padres a 275 ERA, limiting the Rockies to just over three runs a game. Very slim margin for this Padre staff because their offense, to say it's challenged, would be a significant understatement. Well, off of that off speed pitch. Yeah, and it is the pitching that has kept them in the defense. Isn't very bad either. I mean, you look at what they've done, they are 66 and 74 overall. At home, 40 and 31. The road, 26 and 43. They are two games under 500 against the East, four over against the Central, and eight under against the West. The Central Division in the National League's tough division. And to the bat, lifted to left field. Almonte out there waiting. DJ retired. And with two outs, that'll bring up De La Rosa. The next bike to the game is Sunday. Check in at the bike lot near gate uh, E before the fourth inning for your chance to win prizes. Get more information at Rockies.com slash green. That was taken last week when I biked over to the game. You're riding tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah. Always. Okay. Truth. I'm, I'm I riding. want the truth. I want the truth. I'm going to be riding. I didn't no, say what a I, bicycle, a no, car, no, no. or what no, I'm going to be riding, but good. I'm going to be riding, and maybe on Sam's, Sam may come by and get me on his Harley. That's right. When was the last time you rode a bike? The truth. Last, honestly, last week when I was home. Did you really? Uh-huh. Went on a bike ride with my grandkids. We need video. Uh -huh. Hey, it was fun. Found one that fit me. It's great. Did they have training wheels. <laughs> Went to Walmart. And bought me this little bicycle. It was great. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, baby, good for you. Proud of you. Put a helmet on. Nah, I can't do that. Two and one. Got to set an example for your grandchildren. I am. You got on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I got on the bike and rode around the block. He was making sure the insurance premiums yeah, were okay. Was all good. <laughs> yeah, everything was all good, yeah. Back up the middle and on through. De La Rosa keeps the inning alive. Rutledge to second. Looking at the ball right back up the middle. Wheeler tries to backhand, uh, kind of literally backhand, around by on the backside of this thing. De La Rosa doing a good job on the ball away from him. Didn't try to do too much with it. Just let it fly right back up the middle. Out of the reach of Amarista, first and second, and a chance to extend the inning a little bit. 
De La Rosa coming into the game 140 average. It's jumped to 157 now. Pitchers can make uh, quantum leaps starting pitchers with the uh, one good night. Charlie Blackman. Out in front of an off speed pitch 0 and 1. Tonight game number 142 for the Rockies 20 left after this one. To the game tomorrow the Rockies will head to the Big Apple they'll take on the Mets for three and then on to St. Louis. Rockies up one nothing trying to expand that and Great. again uh, an off speed pitch curveball change up the sequence there from Wheeling. Oh St. Louis uh, they're winning 5 2 in the fifth against Milwaukee right now St. Louis as far as the Central's concerned very meaningful games over the weekend in St. Louis. When they come back home the Dodgers. Are going to be very, very meaningful games, and in the last three of the season, could uh, dictate a lot of things. Oh, two. How about Jake Peavy last night? Those three innings takes a two and a half hour rain delay. Comes back, those three more, they win the game. And then today, they end up beating Detroit again. Yeah, the, the Giants are really playing well, and they're swinging the bats better than they have all season. I mean, they're really swinging the bats maybe better than they have in quite some time towards right. the last month or so. I don't recall ever. I should say ever. I, I don't recall the last time I saw somebody go back out after a two-plus-hour rain delay. Yeah, normally you wouldn't ever take that risk or gamble on a guy, particularly on the arm. But I'm sure Peavy, being a veteran guy, said I could take care of it. Let me go back out. Well, we we know because we've been around him enough. We know how he's wired, mm -hmm. and he was in Bochy's office kicking and screaming, saying, "I'm fine. Let me go." Absolutely. And it wasn't about the one start last night. You got to convince the manager. They traded for. Peavy to be a big part of what they're trying to do here in September. Well, it reminds me very quickly that Earl Bruce was at Ohio State. Chris Spielman was a highly decorated high school linebacker. His freshman year, he's on the sideline in Ohio State in their first game. They're having a little rough go of it defensively. He's tugging on Earl Bruce to put him in the game. Yeah. He said, you recruited me, put me in. Yeah. Finally, Earl Bruce relinquished the second half. The rest is history. He went on to become, uh, I believe, a multiple All-American for the Buckeyes. But that's kind of Jake Peavy. Hey, you, you made a move for me. Let me go. Let me go. Back even in the count, Charlie Blackman. Two and two and two on and two outs in the second. That's it. Three and two. Does he get in with the heater? He got ahead with the curveball and a changeup. Struck him out with a fastball. So the Rockies leave two on, but they get a home run from Mike McHenry to dead center field to take a 1 0 lead to the third.
what Tyler Matzik did yesterday as we take a look at the National League standings. They're brought to you by Direct TV. Well, the Giants one and a half back now. The Dodgers, they are nipping at the heels. Padres, Diamondbacks, and Rockies all can play significant roles in the outcome of the National League West and, quite honestly, in the wild card and how it's all going to work itself out. You start to look at the rest of the National League, and I want to do that very quickly. The Cardinals, three game lead over Milwaukee, and they're leading in the ball game now, five to two in the fifth inning. And George, very quickly, Milwaukee's had a wonderful year, and they're in jeopardy of falling apart at the end, and maybe not only not winning the division, which they've led throughout, but not making the postseason. And, and, and I'm, I don't know if it coincides or not, um, but their farm director were, uh, passed away the other day at the young age of 53. And he drafted a lot of these guys that are on that and had a very close and personal relationship with those players. Ron Renneke will try to get him straight down, but it's been a struggle the last 10 days or so for Milwaukee. And of course, that coincided with the Cardinals coming on, picking things up offensively. The Cardinals have hung in there with pitching this year. They have not. Swung the bats well, but now Matt Holliday's been producing, and the Cardinals have been scoring a few more runs. They've won in dramatic fashion a bunch lately, and they're out in front in the National League Central. So year in and year out, they're the team to beat. Clint Hurdle's Pirates still hanging around. Here's the 1 1 to Maven. TV Buckner says no swing. Take a look at it from the overhead to see if uh, yeah, well maybe we want to ask around. I can't believe he turned it down. CB, what's the deal? You need to call up here and ask Drew and I. We'll help you out with that. <laughs> on the corner, two and two on Maven. Cameron out of North Carolina played for the Midland Redskins from the top. Connie Mack teams in the country, Connie Mack programs out of Cincinnati. Line drive, Rutledge makes the grab one out. Well, it's all about reaction. You can talk to any shortstop, and you're going to play to where they pitch you. Playing a little bit shallow, a little bit to the pull side, made two step dive, able to get to the baseball and make the catch on it. You got to leave it on your Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mo. You got to leave your feet to get outstretched to be able to get the extra distance and get there. Nice job by Josh. He will make this play. One play or what? Lexi Amarista fouls it off. Alexi 0 for 7 over the last uh, couple of ball games. to one of those guys you can throw him out in center field not an issue can play anywhere in the infield as we've talked about except probably first I'd like to see him stand back to back with Jose Altuve he may have Altuve by like half an inch both very good players that's the thing about it uh, they haven't let their size determine their success here at the big league level George take a look at the numbers right now for Jose Altuve I know he's playing on a team that's not very good in Houston they're rebuilding but tell me if Jose Altuve's numbers are not MVP worthy uh, 341 right now they're over Victor Martinez Adrian Beltre Jose Abreu the Chicago White Sox his first year in the league Robinson Cano he's got 196 hits he has 51 stolen bases and he's a very dependable second baseman. Speaking of dependable second baseman, there's DJ LeMayhew. Two outs. I mean, it's not just a, a nice story of, you know, this isn't, you know, a, a little guy who made it in the big leagues. This is a guy, a little guy who's made it big in the big leagues in Altuve. He's made it in a big way, given it an opportunity. Another one of those guys continued to hit. You know, he's a better defensive player than Corey Dickerson, but his back got him to the big leagues. Altuva continued to hit, continued to hit all through the minor leagues, and finally, somebody had to give him a shot. You know, and in Texas, uh, the Rangers gave him a shot there in Houston, Texas. And guess what? The Astros, he's done a great job for them. Both listed at five foot six. 
is what they're listed at. O2 on Joe Whelan. You got to love Jorge, George. It just, it makes you laugh. He's a wonderful guy. When you watch him on the mound, you never know if he if he's up by 10 runs or down by 10 runs because he always looks like he has indigestion. Right? He is a tough, tough dude. I'm telling you that out on the mound. He's fun to watch. He just wins. Well, you you uh, told me a long time ago, many, many years wins ago. Wins are good. I said, you know what? The good ones always find a way to win. Figure it out. He's they figured out this ballpark, I can tell you that. Yeah, here's the 2 2. Good fastball, Joe Whelan. We'll walk away. 1 2 3 third after a 1 2 3 second and a 1 2 3 first. Two strikeouts for Jorge, 1 0 Rockies. Right field, you see the right field foul pole, one nothing. as we go bottom three here at Coors Field. Whenever this date in history rolls around, we have to talk about it here on the Rockies games. It is September the 6th, 1995. That's when Cal Ripken Jr. plays in consecutive game number 2,131. He breaks Lou Gehrig's mark with the Orioles. There at Camden Yards, who would go on to play 2,632. Drew George in the pregame show. Jeff Houston and Huey was on that Orioles team said he started at third. The first ball in the game was a pop up to him off the bat of Tony Phillips. And he said he's thinking, oh, there's like 40 million people watching. I cannot drop this pop up. And he made the catch. But he said that was an honor to play next to Cal in that record setting game. How about Huey? Huey's yeah. like the accidental tourist, man. He's everywhere. He, yeah, he's everywhere. Nolan Ryan's throwing no hitters. Huey's playing shortstop. Got to pick Cal's your teammates. Breaking pal. records. Got to Huey's pick. playing right next to him. You got to pick your teammates. Yeah, Huey did a great job. You did a great job. I just went where they gave out rings. That's all I wanted to do. Let me pick. Your team looks like you're going to win. I want to play for you. Yeah, there's Jeff. Along with Corey Sullivan. Two real good defenders right there. Corey was making all world. They, they had a really nice advertisement for the ball game, talking about Corey and uh, Ryan Spielborgs, and then of course Jeff comes down and I do the kangaroo court. But Corey was trying to make the team again as a pitcher at the uh, fantasy camp last year. Did you notice that? He's throwing 100 miles an hour. I'm going, what are you doing? 
Stubbs gets a call in the inside corner. He wasn't and, and by the way, I don't two. know if you've signed up for fantasy camp. Give the Rockies a call. It's a lot of fun down there. I have a blast. You're at the Major League facility just before spring training. And Jason Fleming, the guys here at the, at the ballpark make it a wonderful time for all of you. It is love to have you know and I get this question a lot. I'm going to answer it right now. A lot of a lot of uh, women call or say to me. Hey, can you, why can't we get to go? You can. We usually have nine or ten. You have your own dressing facilities. Uh, and you're treated just like a big leaguer. You have a lot of fun down there and it's a good time for everybody. So yeah, come on and join us. Uh, for in, that. We'd in, love to have in you. fact Ta Tara Harbert who's come for about a decade with well, her, she's with in her the dad Roger. She is in the Hall of Fame and her sister Tammy. They're fixtures every year, and Tara is playing again for Team USA, a women's team that plays baseball, and I think they're over in Japan right now. Mm -hmm. Morney's out front. Stubbs a leadoff walk. Justin Morneau, a base hit to the through the left side, his first time up. Yeah, fantasy camp is something. We all look forward to no, it. Really, I do. I do. I look forward to it being down, having some fun with everybody. I get to see all of the familiar faces. You're going to come back here. You'll play a game at Coors Field, which is pretty neat. Spend a day here. Actually, spend the night the next day at the ballpark. So it's a, it's a fun, fun time to be out and be a part of. It. We've met people from literally all over the world. There was a guy from. Remember that George guy from London came a couple of years in a row. He had found out about. Rockies fantasy camp online. Now he's hooked. This ball's well hit right center field. Take a good look. You won't see it for long. Wow. So two movies on a flight like that. Three nothing Colorado. Yeah, what a nice find for the Rockies. Dan O'Dowd went out and got more note, got him to come here and be a part of this. Checked out physically for it. It has uh, shown a ton of production for this organization. 15 home runs now, 72 RBIs, and no doubt when this left the bat. At the very front of the uh, upper deck there, and then shot down into the Rockies, or I think it was the Padre bullpen. Balls hit hard, very hard. 15 home runs, 72 driven in for Justin. That's one of the most productive free agent signings in last year's offseason. Arenado gets under it. Almonte will make the catch first out of the inning. Well, when you've been an MVP, which he was, and batting titles, all those things, is he healthy? That's all you want to know. Are they healthy? Because they're going to hit. They can play. Those things don't happen by. They don't happen by accident. What also has been really impressive is the defense he's played, George. Just three errors on the year, and a lot of picks, like the mm -hmm. guy he replaced. Yes, he did. In fact, Morneau's fielding percentage at 9.97 leads the National League. Further evidence of how good he's been defensively. Okay, those twins, we've talked about it before. When they were winning divisions and going to the playoffs regularly behind Morneau and Kadire, you understand why. Now that those two guys are Rockies. Well, and you're around them enough to see how they play the game, conduct themselves. Very good examples for everyone that's uh, watching the game on how to go about your business. I'll give you an example of two other guys that came through that organization that we get to chat with a little bit or in the National League now. Ben Revere, who's having a great year, is challenging his old teammate for a National League batting title. He's with Philadelphia. Denard Spann. He's doing a really good job with the Washington Nationals. Those guys are class guys. They know how to play the game. They're winning players. Well, the thing is, in Minnesota, you get to a certain plateau financially, you're going to be going. They just don't have the money there, the resources to be able to afford to keep guys around. And it goes back also, George, to when you were with the Twins and won a world title in '87 because you know, Tom Kelly got it going. Uh, Tom Kelly keeps it going. He's in minor league camp every single year, and then he travels around during the minor leagues. He's now doing some television when Burke takes time off. 
Uh, and, and so, I mean, he's there at the minor league level, and when things aren't going right, he just stops everything, walks out in the middle of the field and says, no, this is the way we do it here. And I think one of the things uh, that Kadir said that uh, really stuck out with him, and I never went to minor league camp with him because I was in the big leagues at the time, was you know, Kadir first-round draft pick. First thing out of their mouths with the Twins, we don't care what round you were drafted in. We could care less. If you're a 40th round pick, we're going to spend three hours in the cage to make you a better player. If you're a first round pick, you'll wait your turn. I mean, it's very simple. Uh, it, everybody's on that equal plane when they show up. 3 2 on Corey. Pulled through the hole. No sacrifice of back for that knock. Looks on the brakes after a hard turn. That is the Rockies' fifth hit. Yeah, broke the bat. It looked like he got inside on the Mike Shaw Super Super Mo right underneath the label. It snapped the bat, but enough of bat speed coming through to get it through to the right side. McHenry went deep. That's right, dead center. 415 feet in his last at bat. But a fastball that was a gut shot right down the middle. Henry's home run was his seventh of the year, 18 RBIs. There was one out and nobody on base when he hit this ball. But uh, maybe all he could do is just watch the flight of it as it splashed down in center field here. This gets away. And Dickerson's going to move up at least one base, maybe two. Medica's throw is cut off. By Amarista. That's a two base throwing error on the pitcher Whelan. I want to see where this throw is. It looked like it hit off the glove of Medica. I, I mean, I, I thought maybe this was a play he could have made. Uh, you know what, George? You may be right. I mean, hopefully we got a, a, a look here at first base when the ball's coming over to him. Yeah, he's got to make that play. I yeah, agree that's with a you. sinker. Yeah, I mean that's a play he's got to be able to make at first base. Unfortunately, now you got uh, for Whelan, good for the Rockies. You got a runner at third and only one out. Get Medica. We see him in left field. I don't know how much experience he has. That ball's got to get caught. He's gotta get, they're giving yeah. the error to the pitcher, and yeah, that's an unfair. But that ball, I agree with you. That has to be handled by the first baseman. McHenry with a base hit to left, and jogging home is Dickerson. It's four nothing. Well, it's not been a pleasant return to the big leagues for Joe Whelan thus far. Yeah, and, and as Bud Black starts to watch it, he's got to have a conversation here pretty soon with Darren Balsley about getting the bullpen going. It's a full bullpen right now. Darren Balsley's going to go out and have a visit with Wheeland right uh, very quickly. Here in the third inning, the Rockies have put up a three spot on the two run home run by Morneau on this line drive, base hit by McHenry out into left field. Pitch is starting to get elevated, not in the lower half of the strike zone, and at this level, they're going to make you pay for it. Through three and a half right now. It's also on top. One to nothing down in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas against the Travelers. Jason Aquino, one of the highly thought of left handed starters in the Rocky organization. Three innings, two hits, a walk, and a strikeout. The RBI on a home run by Taylor Featherston. And it's a strike on Rutledge. She didn't like it, but he's got two more to work with. 0 and 1. McHenry at first, still just one out. Four nothing Colorado. Three runs here in the inning. Wells Fargo customers, get your two for one Rockies club level tickets today by going to wellsfargo.com slash Rockies, Wells Fargo Bank, member FDIC.
Maddox is saying, all right, come on, man, get that throw up in the air to me. <laughs> right? Yeah, their LP, uh, bullpen is going. Tim Stauffer, the veteran right-hander. He's their long, a yeah, long haul guy, George, right? Yeah, he's been in a rotation. He's been in and out. He's been uh, mostly out of the bullpen. Very successful at maintaining a game, getting you out of an inning quickly, and then giving you a couple of more, which you look for. You're going to have to go get him here in a minute. This ball line. Oh, Monte just lost it, I think, in the lights, no, and he hurt, hurt himself. He's hurt. McHenry to third, Rutledge to second, El Monte still down in left center field. I don't know if he lost it in the lights or something gave out on him. It was strange. And it'll be scored, obviously, a double. Coming after this really quick and see that the knee kind of hyper extend and go behind him and then it's just on the ground. He's just got to watch everything else continue on, but it was not uh, not a pretty sight there very quickly. I'll tell you that. I'm sure he's going to be able to get up. Matter of fact, they're bringing the card out. There it appears to be down the left field line. Looking at his ankle, mm -hmm. and on that replay, it did look like the knee was in a, a good place when he. And I, I don't know if it was caused by losing it in the lights. It's kind of at the last moment he ducks down and then he twisted his leg. To try to get up. Well, that's good news. Sometimes, George, you do something like that and it scares you, and, and you're not hurt as bad as you thought you may be. It sure looked awkward, though. Rockies ain't taking advantage of it. Only the bad part is Tim Stoppers had more time to get loose now. Is he going to stay in the game? He went from having the cart coming out to yeah. Almonte trying to talk his way into staying in left field. I'm good, Skip. Nice visit. You know, Jim Edwards was uh, not. I'll tell that story in a minute. Coming in, I mean, I guess the ankle looked right there. Yep, yeah, it just kind of went doubled under him. I, I think initially the ball got in the lights. He tried to readjust his route to the baseball and ended up uh, turning the ankle. You know, Jim Edmonds uh, was a, you know, he played a very shallow center field. He would go out to fly balls at center and he'd dive and he'd catch them and he'd lay there and slide. And next thing he wouldn't get up and the trainer would run out. Tony would get all the way out there and he'd look at Tony and goes, ha. Ah. Highlight reel, huh? Tony told the trainers from now on. He hits the ground. Five minute rule. If he doesn't move in five minutes, we go. Otherwise, we're staying right here in the dugout. I'm tired of running out there. Now, Bud's going to the mound from here, George. Yeah. And this is this is a visit. No, I, uh, I think it's more. Once he found out he was done, it's not a visit. He's adios. Bud's giving him some high fives. Made your way back here. Unfortunately, going to be trailing the game four to nothing, and it's going to be up to Tim Stopper. Try to shut these things down, but give the kid a lot of credit. It's been more than two years of hard work to get back on the mound since Tommy John surgery, and he departs as George said, down four to nothing. Runners in second and third for the Rockies with one out. DJ LeMayhew against Tim Stoffer. When we come back, we're in the third.
long balls tonight for the Rockies. Mike McHenry and Justin Morneau. Morneau is this inning with a man aboard. Want to stay connected to your favorite teams? Follow Root Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up to date with your favorite teams all season long. Tim Stopper will now come into the ball game to try to shut things down on the Rockies. The right hitter has been around a while but has suffered through a number of his own injuries and has battled back from that. The bullpen, San Diego, 254. Look at that, 254 in run average. National League team leader, San Francisco, Washington, Atlanta, Chicago. Stopper, 38th appearance for him, 54 in a third inning, 58 hits given up, 57 strikeouts. He'll feature a fastball that will be 89 to 93, a very good curveball cutter mix, and a changeup to go along with it. This suits him better, George, coming out of the bullpen. In three starts this year, he has an ERA over 10. Coming out of the bullpen 34 times, a 233 ERA. You're going to see cutters early. DJ with two in scoring position, and he fouls this pitch. Excuse me, pops it up down the right field line. Looks like he's going to drift into foul territory. So DJ retired, two outs. That'll bring up De La Rosa, who had a knock his first time up. Side. 2 0 on De La Rosa. Must be pitching around him to get to black. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, first base is open. Yeah, well. Three and up. Why to me, why is Grandal even sitting on the corner? Sit in the middle of the plate, let the ball run, and if he makes contact, have to take it up to the middle again, fine. But if you're pitching to the pitch to the corner, you're pitching off the point. 3-0 count now. Turn De La Rosa loose. Let him swing it. That would be uh, a shot. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised if he took another strike. Well, Arkansas has tied the game now. It's tied one more. This is slowly hit, and it was out at first base by Jerko. In the inning, the Rockies scored three runs. Justin Morneau, a two-run shot, his 15th of the year off the facade of the second deck. McHenry had another RBI as well. 4-0 Colorado off to the fourth.
for the order for the San Diego Padres. Abraham Almonte will hit first against De La Rosa. Let's check our century link link to what's next. The pitching matchup tomorrow. Franklin Morales has drawn a very talented right-hander at Tyson Ross. Ross 13 and 12 with just a 260 ERA. This is a rising star in the National League. In fact, Tyson was an all-star this past year. That would make him a star, a rising star yes. in the National League. De La Rosa who made the final out late to the mound, so he's still throwing his warm-up pitches. How about this? The Padres coming in, George, had allowed only 94 home runs, second fewest allowed. Actually, 99 home runs, second fewest allowed. Now that's up to 101. The Rockies have hit 20 of those, so basically 20% of the home runs they've given yeah. up have come against the Rockies. And on top of that, they've hit a home run in 10 straight games against the Padres. And who's leading it with the least amount of home runs? Give it up. Not sure. Ask Doug. See, that's kind of one of my deals when I'm listening to a game sometimes, and the guy goes, they get second most. Well, I want to know who's first. Yeah, I'll look it up. Look it up real quick. Cubs. They're cheating. A little surprising where they play, too, huh? Been a cool winner. This ball's hit hard to right field. Charlie tracking it to the track. He's got it. Easy. Monte, the first out of the fourth inning. That'll bring up Reimer Liriano. He has the only hit in the game for San Diego. Well, George, it went well for your alma mater, but not the school closest to your home. I know it went very good for Oklahoma and Tulsa game today. If you were a Tulsa fan, great if you're an Oklahoma fan. 52 to 7. Uh huh. Liriano steps in. The Ford Strike Zone is powered by Ford cars, big MPG, smart technology, and unsurpassed quality. See what happens when fun meets the road. Ford go further, line into the seats foul. So on one count, fastball in. That's the other pitch along with the changeup. That hard cutter, he's uh, doing a very nice job with eating up right handed hitters. Dilla has become very accomplished over his time here since 2008 trade that happened with Kansas City. I remember the first start he had against the Dodgers, wasn't he? He gave up 10 runs. In an inning and a third, everybody's like, oh my gosh, why'd you go get this guy? And then the rest has been history. Chance tonight, you know, winning 69th game in a Rocky uniform. Follow the Rockies uh, game through the season's end with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone or tablet. Get the replay, review, scores, stats, audio, and more. Download at bat at the uh, App Store or visit Rockies.com slash mobile today. 1 2, strike 3, 94 on the outside corner. That's three strikeouts for De La Rosa. That was pitch execution right there. Now just look at the strike zone. That's what's interesting about this. You know, every single pitch had a different location with a different purpose. On a Mike Shaw Subaru Super Remote, good fastball, good location. Knees outside corner. Painted right to the center of the body in that outer third of the home plate area. So Larte, the former Yankee, who hit into a 4-6-3 double play, looks at a curveball outside. 1-0. Oh. And that touches the outside corner again. It's 1-1. One
But a one two count good opportunity to come with the change up through a fastball in the outer half of the plate the, the last time. See if he goes that change away. This ball's well hit right center field stubs hoping for a play can't get there. Blackman will cross underneath. And fire it back in it is a two out double for Solarte. Yeah, take a look at this replay of the ball hit Stubbs taken off on the fly. Yeah, you talk about a lot of makeup speed. He's a little bit shallow where he normally plays. This ball hit extremely hard. Man, it's just a foot shy of being able to get there. Good backup by Charlie. Communication among your outfielders. I'm going for the ball. You take it if I don't get it off the ricochet. Jed Jerko lined a fairly deep left field his first time up. Seven for 12 against De La Rosa. Go for three last night. Get this, he's hit 31 home runs playing second base for the Padres. That's his spot. It's the most home runs ever for a Padre second baseman in the history of the franchise. In the history of the franchise. Doug, can you give me the list of the second baseman? He, he surpassed the Mark Loretta, who's Working for the organization uh -huh. in the front office. Mark hit 30. Most home runs by a second baseman in their career as a Padre. You're talking about all time? overall. I would yeah. think Nate Colbert or Adrian Gonzalez. I think Adrian passed Colbert. That's my guess. No, second baseman. I just told you. He's number one. Loretta's number saw, two. But, but who else was there other than those two guys? I'm trying to think of during uh, Ozzy's era that Bip, was playing. Bip Roberts. To, uh, you Did know, he play other, there? Well, you're going back 10 years. I'm going to go back to they've been around a while. You're going back uh, since your childhood. So you want to go back to when Freddie was catching there, huh? To my childhood. <laughs> trying to say who played second when your uh, memories about as, as long as your hair. Yeah, not very right. <laughs> It's the short term that's going. One and two on Jed Jerko. Outside with a changeup. I bet when Gary Templeton was there, who was the second baseman? Alomar hit 22. He was pretty good. That's right. We forgot about Robbie. That's why I brought it up. Brett Boone hit 19 one year. Tim Tuffle 16. Yeah, behind three and two now with two outs after the two out double to Solarte. Well, Weiss watching a master at work here with Jorge De La Rosa. Line drive, base hit, that'll get a run home. And Jerko makes it four to one. 46 RBI. And that's the first run of the series for the Padres. I was say 12 innings, uh, 12 and two thirds innings to shut out baseball by the Rockies. 3 2 count. You mentioned what he had done against De La Rosa so far. He went down and got a pitch here. Very good low ball hitter. Take this ball right back up the middle. Jerko now with 46 RBIs on the year. Not a big threat to steal a base. Left hander on the mound. He has two stolen bases on the year. Deflected. And out. That'll be one four actually on that put out. I believe uh, Jorge got a piece of it. 
in the inning, a two-out double, and then a single from Jerko. Four to one, Rockies. Rockies victory, get 40% off your online order at Papa John's. Enter the promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. If you're situated on the moon, they do not deliver there. Everywhere else they do deliver, though. And 10% of their sales will be donated to Children's Hospital Colorado. Gorgeous night in Lodo. And on the rooftop, it's always happening. Charlie Blackman at the top of the Rockies order in the fourth. Rockies up four to one. Tim Stoffer got the final two outs in the third in relief of Joe Whelan. Whelan went just two and a third in his return from Tommy John surgery more than two years ago. All four runs he allowed were earned. Seven hits, a walk, a strikeout for Whelan. 0 and 1 on Blackman. He's 0 for 2. That's a pretty good hook, 0 and 2. Strike three at the top of the strike zone, says Quinn Walcott. Yeah, caught right up in that upper half of the zone. It's a high pitch. That's why you're so used to looking down in the zone. Charlie can only turn the ball back. A little disgusted with the call. Drew Stubbs. Ground ball to short and a walk. He scored on the Morneau home run last inning. Guys like Stopper are very uh, valuable to a club. I've mentioned numerous times about the job Matt Daly did here. Guys that can come in and eat up some innings when a starter blows out early in the game, keep it, keep the game where it is, maintain, give you a chance to get back into it. Can really save a bullpen. Ball to right. 
Liriano makes the catch, and they're two gone. Nobody on for Morneau. Just it'll come up two for two, single and a two-run home run for Morneau. It's a tight batting race in the National League. This ball, a rocket to right, another hit for Justin. So he's Just three for three. Yeah, Came in hitting 309. Came in hitting 309 and it's at 314 now. After a couple of base hits, you'll take a look at this on a fastball that was going for the outer half of the plate. He left it in the middle. Justin made a pay for it with a base hit to right field. Josh Harrison in that game that was suspended last night finished today, went four for six. So he was hitting 315 after that game. But let me check the uh, regularly scheduled game, George. And in that game. He didn't play. So he's at 315. Andrew McCutcheon's at 305. So opposing was at 310 entering play today. It's one and one on Nolan. From the rooftop, the view that they get, what a great place that's been all summer long. Packed again tonight here on a Saturday night. Posey, three for three, his 20th home run. He's at 310. Bumgarner won that ball game against Detroit. 17 and 9. David Price took the loss 13 and 11. One and two on Nolan. Two outs. Morneau at first. Change up. That was a terrific change up as well. Yeah, he's got a good. Two strikeouts in a scoreless inning for Stopper. We'll go to the fifth. The Rockies leading four to one over the Padres. Here's our first bank game recap. Put the seventh inning stretch to good use. Get first bank's free check at eFirstBank.com. McHenry hit a home run to dead center field in the second. And then in the next inning, Justin Morneau hit a two-run home run. Rockies would scratch out another run on a McHenry base hit. Jerko a two-out RBI single for the Padres in the fourth. So it's four to one. Jorge De La Rosa in search of his 14th victory of the year. 
And his 10th here at Coors Field. Tommy Medica, Cameron Mabin, Alexi Amarista. 6, 7, and 8 for the Padres. Medica takes a strike. Fifth innings are Toyota talk in. We'll get some questions here momentarily. This ball's well hit in center field. Yeah, really well. So well hit, it's gone. Oh, oh, that's, that's His eighth of the year, 24 RBIs for now. Well, that ended in 0 for 29. Oh, a little anger in that swing. That's what happens, you know. Go back to the dugout and you go, you know what? It's over. Yeah, you can see it's look over. It looked up. Got rid of it. Didn't want to get rid of it against the Rockies, though. That ball out front, he's able to catch on to it. Jorge De La Rosa with a little bit of a hop at the very end of that. And uh, when he rounded the bases, finally got down back to the dugout. He had a big smile on his face. 4-2 uh, now. Rockies on top here to top of the fifth inning. And Padres got back in it with the uh, two runs. Here's Mabin. He's hit a home run against De La Rosa before. Fastball inside, ball one. Cameron just four for 23 himself since returning from being suspended for 50 games. This is playable for Blackman and Wright. So here's Tommy Medica coming in the dugout. Everybody in that dugout knew exactly what he had been going through. Every guy, Bill Plantier, everybody, the hitting coach, Bud Black, the manager. I can hit. I really, I can hit again. <laughs> you have to be confident to play the game at this level, but George, you would know better than anybody at, at times, even for the most confident. The game can. Uh, I can tell you from a pitcher's perspective. That confidence. Well, tear, I can tell you from a pitcher's perspective that uh, I remember one time in Kansas City, I just told George Brett what was coming. He thought I was joking. I didn't get anybody out for like three weeks. He was like, all right, well, I'm going to try a new twist. I did. Hey, here you go, hit it. Strike one. He was like, oh, he's getting in it. Adam Moore, right hander, getting uh, in the on deck circle for Stopper. He did just what uh, Bud Black wanted him to do. He ended up grounding out to second base. Started screaming at me, don't do that again. <laughs> I don't want to know what's coming. One and two on Alexi Almarista. A couple of years ago, Jamie Moyer uh, had kind of had the same thing down at the minor league game. Let's see what they tweeted. What they tweet into us tonight, Drew. Uh, first question. Question, is there a major league rule against women players? Or is it just tradition? I don't think it's either. I, I, I don't know if there's been a woman yet that has been, been able been to reach the big leagues. It's had it's a couple of minor leagues, it. right? Uh, has there been a woman in the minor leagues? I don't know. Campos is warming up down there uh, in their bullpen. There's no rule against it. Not that I know of. Maybe Monet Davis will be the first, right? There you go. It's compost warming up. Popped up third base territory. Arenado's going to have it in foul ground. Two outs. So Adam Moore will be the pinch hitter. When is Willene Rosario eligible to come off the DL? Check the notes right now and tell you. It's 
right up the elevator shaft. McHenry will fade it back to the screen, spin back to him, get the third out. I think he's eligible to come off on the seventh. Home run by Tommy Medica, breaking an 0 for 29 slide, and the Padres within two of the Rockies, middle of five. By the Ford Fusion, power what you uh, want and good looks too. Ford, go farther. By Southwest Airlines, find your fares only on southwestairlines.com. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Jeep, visit jeep.com to learn more. Here's more from the Bat Rack Snoop Cam with the Rockies ahead 4 to 2. Brandon Barnes. Stubbs adding a couple of bats. New pitcher for the Padres, Lionel Campos is on to throw the fifth inning. Dickerson's going to lead things off for the Rockies. They're up four to two. Well, I went next door and asked uh, Mark Grant. I said, what's this guy feature? I hadn't seen him before. He said, I haven't either. Fastball slider. And a lot of guys coming out of the bullpen. He pitched uh, 23 innings. Excuse me, two thirds of an innings against the Diamondbacks on Wednesday had zeros across. He threw two pitches. That's pretty good out. If you can throw two and get through it, that's that's pretty good, by the way. Just saying. Dickerson slashes at a high fastball and it's going to drift out of play. I'm going to dig around here. This guy's got me. Come on. in a single his last time up one for two. Nobody's hit more home runs since August the 10th than Corey. He's got nine. Had a Giancarlo Stanton who has eight. This one's popped up and playable. So a little more last night on the performance of on last night's performance by Tyler Matzik. Low hit games by a Rocky at Coors Field. Jeff Francis threw a two hitter. Remember Sun Woo Kim threw a three hitter back in 05 against the Giants. I remember that. It's the fourth complete game shutout by a Rockies rookie. The first ever at Coors Field. Now the other three. 
Jason Jennings. Maybe the most famous one. At Shea Stadium in his major league debut in which he also hit a home run. I'll tell you what, Campos has fallen through their minor league season, through their minor league teams. He pitched in Eugene in 2011, injured in 2012, 13 a couple of teams. 54 ball games, 7 of 8 in save opportunities. And then in 2014, 2 and 7, had a mid 6 ERA pitching for Reno. And, uh, 82 innings, he had 108 strikeouts. Pretty good arm. So the other two guys, George, just finishing that story. John Thompson was a rookie who threw a shutout. And then the one guy that had a very brief major league career, but I'll never forget the outing, down in Houston with uh, his folks there, Mark Brownson, who made kind of an emergency start for the uh -huh. Rockies. And that was back when they had Biggio and Bagwell. and Pits very well against them. They had a very they good had ball a, club. They had a really good ball club, a terrific lineup, and he throws a complete game shutout. And, it was really going to be one start and then back down to the to AAA. And you can't send a guy out after he throws a complete game uh, shot out yeah. on the road. So we yeah. got another uh, another couple of starts in the big leagues, but he'll always have that one shining moment. Well, you go back to this. This was also in the Astrodome. It was not in the new ballpark. So he was dealing with the AstroTurf. But uh, uh, Boise Salou. That, that featured a very good breaking ball. Nine innings, four hits, seven strikeouts. He walked a batter. Then Jason Jennings in New York in his rookie debut went nine innings, five hits. He struck out eight. Oh, yeah, he did hit that home run. And he walked four in that ball game, but he had a very good slider throughout that game. Brownson ended up getting in 11 major league games. We talk about him like once every year. Went two and two with a 694, had nine starts. But again, always had that moment. Josh Rutledge has been on twice. A walk and a double. Henry aboard with one out. And Jennings went on to an accomplished career. John Thompson had a good career. Tyler Matzik, we're just seeing the uh, infancy of what could be a really fine career. Post with a one and one count. Alex Torres, the left hander. This time of year at the bullpens, there's not a seat for everybody. This is inside out into right field. It's fair. McHenry will go to third. The throw into second is not going to get Rutledge. Another double for Josh. He's had a heck of a home stand. On average, to continue to hover around that 250 mark till this homestand, and then a continued climb 264 now uh, during this homestand for Josh. He's swung about very well, slicing this ball into right field. Two thirds of an inning, two pitches. He's thrown now a total, talking about uh, Campos on the mound, 10 pitches. He's got second and third, and, and only one out in the rock. He's looking to tack on to this 4 2 lead with LeMayu up. Eight for his last 15. Rockies with DJ at the plate. Two ribbies out there for him. He was in the same situation in his last at bat. Same exact situation. Second and third, one out. He popped out the second. Yeah, different guy on the mound. This guy's a hard thrower you can adjust to. It's a slider sinker. 
Well, the other guy, Stauffer, had a very good changeup, curveball, cutter. He had all kinds of mixes uh, to go through. Rondahl has had a couple of balls down in the dirt. Now the baby bull bobblehead is coming up on Sunday. The baby bobblehead uh, gnome, courtesy of 850 KOA and Napa Auto Parts, arrive early. Gates will open two hours prior to the ball game. Maven swung around toward right center. DJ with that inside out swing. I was talking to him about that yesterday. That's always been his approach. Just his swing path when he started hitting as a kid, driving the ball the other way. So when you see him pull it, you've seen him hit a couple of pull home runs this year, and it's always on a breaking ball. Mm -hmm. well, his hands are back, able to adjust to that pitch very easily that way. Ninety five of his hits have gone to center and right only 20 to left. Rob Dahl blocks that it's two and one. You know, Tulsa's taking the lead in the six. They're ahead now three to one. This is loop behind first could drop it does fair ball. And now Rutledge will try to score safe. Let it stoop forward with that. 6-2 good heads up base running. He wasn't going initially. McHenry obviously scored right away. 38 RBIs now for DJ LeMay. You may take over the lead for batters hitting in the eight hole with RBIs. It's dumped into the outfield, mishandled. That's what allowed Rutledge to come in and score. And he did right ahead of the swipe tag by Grandal. You watch Stu Cole back in the background, folks. You're going to watch him. There goes one. Now he's going to see when it got bobbled. He's going to say, let's force it. Make him make the throw to home plate. Not a good throw. High. And a run scored. That was great. Rutledge with the uh, slide by or fly by. Here's a stolen and base. And a stolen base by DJ is ninth. Now taking advantage of a rookie here with the bunt situation on. De La Rosa tried to go for the bunt. DJ steals the base coming in. Slides a little bit short of second base. Momentum takes him in in a 6 4 frame ahead of the tag. Now you let him swing away with one out. Pretty good swing. Boy, he had a base hit his first time up. Saturday night and that's been a, a good night for the Rockies. It's the only night of the week. They have a winning record 12 and 9. The way they're going to score that last play one RBI for LeMahieu and then with the bobble they're going to charge an error to the right fielder Liriano allowing Rutledge to score. Much as I'd like to give DJ two RBIs, that's the right call. 
Where is he still in the ranking now? 30 yesterday, I believe. Right. He, he, he was tied ball. with Cozart coming into the game and see at 30. Cozart, at 30. See if Cozart drove anybody in today. I'm just seeing if Cozart drove any in today. He did not drive anybody. Sue Strand tells me out of the truck. Thank you, Sue. Two outs. Charlie will come up. Pretty interesting. The top spot and the flip the order spot in the National League. The Rockies have the leading RBI man in the game. What's a little surprising to me is the five spot that Marlon Byrd has the most at 67. Tells you that for most managers, it's a, a, a fluid situation. You usually have your three hole hitters pretty entrenched, cleanup hitter pretty entrenched. And with that next RBI spot in the middle of the order, the five hole, teams juggle it a little bit. Strike on Blackman, 0 for 3. He and Arenado are the only two not to have reached in this game for the Rockies. The Rockies got those two runs back. Gave up in the last couple of innings. Six to two they lead. They've out hit the Padres ten to four. This ball pulled past EY foul. Two for the Rockies. DJ drives in one. A little help by a misplay in right field. Garners the Rockies. Their next run. 6 2, they lead. Ten hits for the Rockies, just four for the Padres. Let's take a look at our AT&T fan photo of the game. You can tweet your photo to hashtag COFanPhoto for an opportunity to have it shown in a game. Brought to you by AT&T. And this young man taking in the Rockies earlier this year, the uh, day before he went to Marine Boot Camp. And he's almost through boot camp, and we wish him all the best, and we thank him already for his uh, service. Great picture from Bob. Abraham Alfonte in the sixth inning against De La Rosa. Jorge's thrown 64 pitches thus far. 
And the fastball's down low at 92. Real good total at this juncture, George, pitch wise. Very good juncture. Very good job with his fastball, too. I think that's been the key to it. He's got 122 strikeouts on 165 and two thirds innings now. 43 strikes thrown on the day and 23 balls. Well, he's now 47 strikeouts shy of Ubaldo Jimenez for number one all time with the Rockies. Lifetime, he's 8 3 against the Padres. 1 and 1 this year. Had a start against them with uh, six innings, seven hits at San Diego. Well, here at Coors Field, seven innings, one hit back on May 16th. Tickets now for the fan appreciation fireworks, courtesy of Great Clips on Friday, September the 19th, after the Rockies take on the Diamondbacks. How about that? This is July 4th fireworks, and you, you don't want to miss it, folks. Just tell you, I'm just saying. Well, you just did. No, you didn't either. It's coming right now. See, so look at it. Right there it is. You're going to see it again here on the 19th. Three and two. Didn't miss it. We saw it to you. If you missed it, we just saw it to you. Showed it to you again. Here's the grand finale, Drew. You did miss this one. And everybody said, okay, it's over. Let's run out of the park and get home. Beat the trap. Three, two, back up the middle. DJ's there. And good throw out on Monte. Boy, you just. You don't ever want to take for granted good defense. I know as a pitcher you would, George, but DJ LeMayhew is just so. You just keep coming back to the same word to describe him steady. Makes all the plays. And he makes all the plays. I think that's the one thing about it. Last night's ball game, it was a constant. He made three plays out of the first six outs of the ball game, came on to make three again in the next three innings. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's uh, always there, seems to be. Steady play, steady time. Fielding percentage among National League second baseman, he's third. Brandon Phillips, Neil Walker, and then DJ LeMayu. And Brandon missed some time with that broken thumb. And of course, he's a big name player. I would imagine he'll win another gold glove, but I'd sure like to see it. I don't know what to see a bunch of votes for DJ in that regard. But then last year, he won the, won the deal from Wilson. Yeah, the top defensive second baseman in baseball. This is in center field. It's going to drop a base hit. Stubbs has got it. Second hit Luriano has had in the ballgame. That'll bring up Solarte. Tulsa could pull that win off tonight with Aquino on the mound. Then you've got uh, Butler and Anderson to start the first two games of that next uh, series, which would be against Midland and Frisco. They're up two to one right now in games, and they're winning in this game three to four to one. It'd be great to see both Asheville and Tulsa move along. Runner going and all popped out of McHenry's glove, so a stolen base for Liriano. His second. Uh, McHenry disappointed with that because it, uh, things had really picked up after a slow start for McHenry. He'd thrown out seven of would be 29 base stealers, and he came up quick with that. The ball just came up out of the hands on the Mike Shaw Super Super Mode. Tough ball to do it with. Cutter change up down and then of course the uh, you notice there right at the very end show that again if we could guys in between pitches I want to and stop that on the follow through of the hitter. I get get a look at this here's uh, two stolen bases now. 
inside. Look at this again. I'm, and, and we're going to stop this and, and a little bit of disruption here, right? Kenry's focused on catching the ball before it hits the dirt, gets it. And as he starts to come out of the crouch, watch the follow through there. Right here, catches him right on the arm. Then you're going to see McHenry come up. The ball pops out because the hands kind of, I mean, that whole arm goes limp. Remember the other day against San Francisco when uh, Pablo Sandoval stepped on that left forearm. Or excuse me, right forearm. And then fell on him. And then fell on top of him. So it's kind of a tough week getting beat up. Two and two on Solarte. Runners in scoring position. The Padres are at 214. That's lowest in the National League. The lowest in club history was 219. That was 1974. The lowest since 74. Is that the Reds? No, that's the Mets. In 74, hit 210. All the averages have backed up. I mean, the league average is 248. You're hitting above 248. You're above the above the average. Above the. Uh, mean and even some big name players having MVP type of years are below 300 and for that I give you arguably the best player in the game Mike Trout went 0 for 4 today he's hitting 284 and De La Rosa with the strikeout of Solarte two outs Here's the guy that drove in a run earlier, Jerko, has uh, great success somehow against De La Rosa. Didn't have success on that cutter. Jerko, a towering fly ball to deep left at the sharp single to drive in the run, George mentioned. For whatever reason, he sees Jorge very well. The official, I had it at 248. The official average is 249 in the National League. And that is the lowest average since the Rockies have been a franchise. That's a strike. To left, and he just continues to tear apart Jorge oh. De La Rosa. Amazing. That makes it 6 3, the double by Jerka. 47 RBIs for Jerko now. He came in hitting 194, but he's 8 for 14 in his career against De La Rosa on a pitch that was down and in and it, once again it's proven to me this guy is a really really good low ball hitter pitch that he hit up the middle for a base it was a low ball you know, Walt Weiss going out to the mound it's not Jimmy Wright going out to the mound nobody's warming up down in the bullpen yet for the Rockies He's starting to play catch down there Brooks Brown the right hander Yes, Bonnie Grandal in a 6 3 game. Put the inning down now. You know, maybe he's going out there to check too, uh, medically on him to make sure he's all right, too. You know, whatever the message was, it was short. And I'm not going to determine from 500 feet whether it was sweet or not. But it was a, a visit to the mountain. Did you know that money generated from hunting and fishing in our state creates jobs and protects wildlife? So when you see a hunter or angler, give them a hug. Learn more at hugahunter.com.
Grandal on the outside corner for strike one. Padres right-handed hitters had a difficult time with a hard slider down and in from Tyler Matson. The head on two. And when you have enough fastball, you can rise it above the hands. And Jorge definitely has that. He's averaged 93 tonight, touched 95. He tried to go away and up with the fastball at 93, and he got a look. Jerko's at second. Here's the one two. High and away again, two and two. It's a full count. Three and two. Did get the swing on it. Uh, what I thought maybe. Uh, 88 mile an hour cutter that Grandal would take a hike at it, but he didn't. Walt Weiss looking on. The pitch count's not a factor at 87. He just wanted to end this thing. Get this inning over with. Medica hit a home run in his uh, last at bat that broke a one for 29. Medica who hit a long home run to break an 0 for 29 slide in his last at bat. Yeah, Walt hadn't even made a move out of that dugout yet, so it's going to be Jorge's job to go ahead and disperse. I mean, Jorge upset with the results of that pitch. Sitting at 88 pitches here, McHenry going out to just a quick visit. Let's get on the same page. Let's get after this guy. Here, left-hander Flandy has joined Brown down in the bullpen for the Rockies. Walt, uh, and, and again, De La Rosa put his hands up, stuck it out, and looked at Walt. Said, "No, no, no, let me get him." Walt uh, running this ball club is going to go out and get Jorge right here with runners on first and second. Two outs. He'll bring in the young right hander, Brooks Brown, uh, to take right on right. So De La Rosa walks off, leading six to three, unable to get that final out in his sixth inning.
Season on Root Sports. Tune in uh, to the Rams report with Jim McElwain every Thursday for your full coverage on CSU football. Only on Root Sports. That's the Rams report with Jim McElwain. Here on the Rockies report, it's 6 3 Colorado. Two outs in the fifth inning, two men on, a run already in for the Padres. Tommy Medico homered in the fifth against De La Rosa. We'll now see Brooks Brown. Hard throwing right hander. And his right handers appeared in 18 ball games so far 17 and two thirds, 15 strikeouts. And he's only walked five. Seth Smith will come on now and pinch hit for Bud Black. And uh, fans, I, we all know what Smith can do as a pinch hitter through his career. This year's no different. Four for 13, a home run, and a couple of RBIs. Yeah, Bud's going to play that Smith card right here in the sixth inning. An opportunity to tie it up if he were to go deep. You still have the, you, you don't have the familiarity to facing Brown. Not a guy that you've seen an awful lot. It's not like uh, somebody coming out that you face numerous times. Now Smith, like so many guys do against their former club, he has extraordinary numbers. 12 games against the Rockies since he departed. 438 average, four home runs, nine ribbies. Yeah, hope for ground out second. Yeah, Brown will try to cool him off one and one. Two and one. We thank you for tweeting in your questions in the fifth inning during Toyota Talk. For more answers to some questions you may have, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rootsportsrm. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Mark Stout. Rockies led four to nothing, four to two, six to two. It's now six to three. Two outs in a lengthy sixth inning. Brown in relief. Hard two seamer, a hip side two seamer, and it's two and two. Got it over the inside corner. Good looking pitch, George. 94 miles an hour placed on that inner half, and uh, not particularly pleased with it for Smith, but a really good pitch from Brown. Two two fly ball to left field easy pickets for Dickerson. He's got it. And Brown retires Smith. So the Rockies will take their six three lead to the bottom half of the inning. Stubbs will lead it off.
Cody Lexus look back. Rocky's got a quick jump in this game on Joe Wheelan. 430-foot home run from Michael McHenry into the fountains, his seventh. And then Morneau with a runner aboard hit one off the facade of the second deck, and it dropped into the visitor's bullpen and then out onto the field. 15th home run for Morneau. And then DJ LeMayhew with perfect placement on that bloop single. It was an error on the right fielder, Liriano. Didn't pick up the baseball cleanly, and the Rockies got two more runs. It's 6-3 as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Seth Smith stays in the game in left field. And Jake Gobert is now at first. So Medica and Almonte out of the game. Gobert goes into Almonte's spot. Drew Stubbs swings in the foul tip. It's 0-1. Second inning for Campos. Two strike count on Drew. Just off the plate, one and two. According to home plate umpire Quinn Walcott. Second strikeout for Campos. Yeah, let's take another look at that fastball. I can understand why you'd be a little bit of grumpy, but remember he called one earlier in the ball game for strike two on Corey Dickerson away. You start to look, is it right at the knees? No, a little bit below. Tough to handle. So here's more now. Justin is three for three. Single, two run home run, and a single. Move the average to 314 with the three hits. Looking at that batting race, it's as tight as it could be. Harrison leading after a four for six. Ben Revere right there also. This is going to be a tough chance. No chance. Not handled cleanly by Amarista. Give him a hit. Yeah, another look at this, too, because he is shading up the middle. He's trying to slice it in to left field, and then uh, it does not. Able to backhand the baseball, able to feel that cleanly. I think he probably has more no, but uh, did not feel the clean. They're making that decision downstairs. No decision yet. More no at first. Arenado is 0 for 3. And that is a base hit. Another look at Nolan Arenado's base hit. Fastball down and away. Nolan, a very good low ball hitter, a lot like Jerko. He's able to take this pitch with a base hit. They give Morneau a base hit. That's his first four hit game. And that'll be all for Campos. Two on for the Rockies in the sixth inning, trying to keep adding on one out. Torres will be next when we return to Coors Field.
sixth inning with one out. It's too odd. Corey Dickerson is going to face Alex Torres. They're the busiest left-hander out of their bullpen all year long. It's his 63rd appearance. 331 earned run average to go along with those 49 innings, 46 strikeouts. You're looking at home at the hat he's wearing. He's one of the few pitchers in baseball wearing the perfected helmet. Fly ball down the left field line, and that one will land up. End up in the seats about 12 rows up. Base hit back in the third. He's one for three. Scored a run as well. Corey's part of the second most productive offensive outfield in baseball. Second only to the Marlins led of course by Giancarlo Stanton who's driven in more runs than anybody. And consider that Michael Kadire and Carlos Gonzalez have been hurt for a good portion of the year and yet the Rockies still are second on that list. Tip of the cap to Dickerson to Blackman to Stubbs. Barnes. By the way, Dickerson one for one against Torres as they've matched up here. Two strike count on Dickerson. That's high. Second base, Morneau. He had his fourth hit of the game. He's four for four. Arenado with a base hit behind it. He's at first. Erwin is also being uh, is warming up down in their bullpen, but right now it's Torres versus Dickerson trying to get this thing cleaned up. Tulsa leads it now six to one by. By the way, in the seventh inning. Well, you got a couple right handed hitters coming up next. You wonder if this is one and done for Alex Torres. One, two, grouncing ball oh, to third. Look what I found. That's going to turn into a. Uh, ooh, Dickerson beat it. Good hustle by Corey. You know, Bud Black's going to come out. Another close call for C.B. Buckner at first. Yeah, he got one. He got one wrong. Let's see if he's got uh, another one. I hope he didn't. I hope he got it right. Yeah, I thought it's an interesting play too. You look at this play at third base by Salarte. This ball's kind of a oh man, look what I found because I got to be able to just get it on the short hop and then a throw over to first base. A lot of hustle stretched by Gobert. Ooh, I can't tell. Man. Not on that angle right there. I mean, is his foot down? Golly, that's almost like the Stubbs deal, but uh, in agreement, but Black's headed back to the dugout. Yep, no challenge. Not allowed to carry. The hit here first and third. Now to give you some numbers, maybe that Bud Black has taken a peek at in his dugout. And so you start to look at what guys do against different people, how they handle the pitching side of it. 
Can't be a lot of matchups between these two. No, but you go what uh, Torres has done against right handers is what you're looking at. You know, that's what's he done against right handers versus left handers. Dougie, you've you, you stapled this upside down. This is a difficult thing to try to look through right now. No, I got it. I got it. I'm going to figure it out here in a minute or two. Let's go this way. <laughs> Torres against uh, 259, 259 right, 220 left. So either way, I mean, it's pretty good numbers. Henry's ahead 2 and 0. Oh. Back a home run, a single, and a walk. He's driven into, and he has scored two. I love it when a pitcher does that on a 2 0 count. Got kind of the fake throw over to first base. Now your mind's on Corey Dickerson, it's not on. Michael McHenry McHenry already with some big base hits a home run a single 19 RBI's they will give the soft throw over. Two outs first and third McHenry with a 2 0 count. Three, you know. Now for Grandal too, he's thrown out six uh, would-be base dealers out of 43. Anyway, some Corey trying to take things around a little bit over there, but I'm ready to stay put and let him turn the back. The Rutledge has done damage tonight, also. Yeah, big damage, big damage in the home stand. A couple of doubles. The Rutledge ball in the dirt. He'll walk McKinnon. And Rutledge will come up with the bases loaded. Here are doubles tonight for Rutledge. One of them came off the starter Wheeler in the left center field and uh, didn't see this ball. Now Monte came up short. Rutledge jogs into second base and he gave a flare to right field. That drove in a run. Now Rutt makes his way into second base. McHenry to third base. Bases loaded down for Josh Rutledge with two outs. Strike one. On a season for Rutledge, he's one for three with the bases loaded. The Rockies 24 of 89, 270 on the year. Over the top of the slider, it's one and one. Excuse me, it's 0 and 2. It's been a changeup. For the most of the year, the only left hander they had down in the bullpen. Or anybody else uh, occupying that spot? They've added two here since they expanded rosters. Erlin and Garces are the other two. Erlin came over to trade with Whelan from the Texas Rangers. Job of fighting a nasty pitch off on the outer half. 95 mile an hour fastball. Prior to tonight, Rutledge was one for 21 against San Diego pitching this year. He's had a good night thus far. Bases loaded. 6 3 Colorado. One two. And that kicks back. 
Pop was... right on the grass. Probably a good thing for San Diego it did because everybody's going to be safe and the Rockies would have expanded that lead seven to three. And cut right on the area where the ground screw cuts this. Watch that here. Boom. Kicks right on that uh, edge of the grass and on the dirt area. Shot out into foul territory. Two and two. Change up in that situation. I mean, I'm not going to question. I'm not on the field. I don't, you know, not getting a read on what's going on. But if that better be one of your better pitches in this situation, three run deficit, bases loaded, one two count, go to that money pitch if you're going to throw it. Morneau, Dickerson, and McHenry all on base. And Rutledge goes down swinging. So the Rockies leave them loaded at the six. We go to the seventh. Colorado six and the Padres three. Retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Colorado Rockies. 6 3 as we go to the top of the seventh inning. Tommy Canely is going to take over for the Rockies. Jorge De La Rosa is on the plus side. He went five and two thirds. Brooks Brown got the final out for him in the sixth inning. Yeah, Brown did a great job to get out of that inning. Now they're going to hand the ball over to Tommy Canely. 49th appearance for the rookie 352 earned run average 64 innings so far and have him clean up the uh, inning here they also have Flande throwing down in the bullpen the left hander he was up earlier in the ball game so he starts to get loose and, uh, situation need be good throw by McHenry to send things down to start here in the top of the seventh inning second appearance for Canley since coming off the disabled list Face Maven. Initially, Maven, a right handed hitter, and righties are hitting 223 against Tommy. Lefties are hitting just 165. It's the third best batting average against lefties in the league. You'd think it would be a, a left handed pitcher. 
A yeah, hard good change up slider to go with it. That's what Drew's mentioning not anybody hitting a whole lot against him at all. One ball one strike. Swing pitch swung on a miss, so it's one and two. Alexi Amaris is on deck. Strike out of Maven, one out in the seventh. This thing fell off the table. Yeah, put it where you want to. That's the key to get well up on top of that pitch and just drive it to the bottom half of the zone. Five pitches, four strikes so far for Tommy. Spangenberg is uh, out in the on deck circle, one of the youngsters they brought up. to check swing foul ball on a 95 mile an hour fastball. Rockies offensively have left 10 on base. Still have a three run lead. That opportunity seems like every inning. Swing Burke, a uh, young left handed hitter, a first round draft pick in 2011 by the Padres, 10th overall pick in that draft. Corey Spangenberg's in the on deck circle. Two strike count on Amarista. Oh. Well, that's not what you want to do, O2. That's not what you want to do in a three run lead by type ball game. Throw the heater inside, caught him right above the knee. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, he's not going to feel real good tonight or in the morning either one. Cart's been there twice tonight. The first time he wasn't needed, fortunately. That's when Almonte went down with a twisted ankle. Actually ended up staying in the game. That's an instant Charlie horse. <laughs> and one you don't really want.
I'll tell you what, there's some snipers running around the ballpark tonight. They got the one in left field. That's kind of a, a joke, folks, at the, you know, the, uh, the dugout. Going down quick and uh, staying in the game, though, fighting their way back through it. So Corey Spangenberg's the pinch hitter. Yeah, pretty good player too. I mean, this young man is a number one draft pick. Went to VMI, was an All-American, went to junior college, was the tenth pick in the draft in 2011. So far in this young career, ten at bats, he has three hits, a home run, and three RBIs. Deep left field, Dickerson. Gone, gone. I think that carried out. I guess so. It did. Two run home run. And it's six to five. Spangenberg off the bench. First pitch he sees, he goes off of. Second time, five RBIs now. He's got 11 at bats with five RBIs in the big leagues and two home runs. Wow. Holy cow. That's a fastball away at 95 miles an hour, and it just carried. Corey Dickerson went back to the wall on it. Just disappeared right over the top of the fence. That young man looking at it caught it right in the leg. That catch him or the chair. Mom ducked for uh, shelter over there. Game's pretty huh. easy for Spangenberg. Five games, two bombs. Walt takes the baseball from Canely. He's making a slow walk to the dugout. It's now a one run ball game. Spangenberg hit only 12 home runs in 374 minor league games. Johan Flande, former starting pitcher, will be next. to five Colorado there's one out in the seventh inning and Walt's trying to piecemeal his way through the seventh inning you know he wants to go to Adovino in the eighth so he's asked Johan Flande to get Jake Gobert over to left handed bat this will be his first AB came into the ball game at first base last inning now Abraham Almonte was removed because Smith came in also Got Smith report. came in off the bench as a pinch hitter and stayed in left field. They're in, they're in the Pacific Coast League, left on left. You've seen each other come in, fire, and throw the slider. He did 0-1 count. Went right back to it again, right on the corner for strike two. Well, there's a trust factor with Flande. He's going to throw strikes. That's a nice story. You know, credit John Wild, the scouting department, for finding Flande. This ball is going to be popped up in the infield. Arenado will settle under it and will make the play for out number two. Number seven. So 
Got to bring up Reimer Liriano. He's two for three tonight. Yeah, well, Weiss Culberson will come in. Rutledge will leave. And Ottavino will come into the ballgame. Won't be smealing a seventh inning together. So he's going to ask Ottavino to get four outs. Adam Ottavino on board when we come back. 6 5 Colorado, two outs, nobody on in the seventh for San Diego. Two outs, nobody on. Adam Adovino ready to go against Reimer Liriano, and the slider is outside ball one. Two run home run in the inning from the pinch hitter Corey, Corey Spangenberg has made it six to five. Coberson in is short. Rutledge out, so Coberson will hit second next inning. And the slider's in there one and one. Hey, look at Adovino's overall numbers 69th appearance that ties for the most in the National League now with Smith at Milwaukee with 69 appearances 60 innings 63 hits he struck out <clears throat> 65 on the year. And that misses. Liriano a single in the first he struck out looking in the fourth against De La Rosa and then singled against him in the sixth inning and Jorge went five and two thirds. Well, Volkov getting checked an awful lot not only on the low strikes but on the from Liriano that time on the high strike. Didn't like that high slider. 231 of the year home run and four RBIs a couple of singles in the run the game in the game tonight with the run score. See ya. Alvino comes in, strikes out Liriano. We'll go to the bottom of the seven. The Rockies six, the Padres five. Stretch time at Coors Field.
left field. Seth Smith's going to bump over to right field. Liriano comes out of the ball game. And Dale Thayer is now in for San Diego with the distinctive facial hair. Man, he is a hard thrower. 62 innings in the other part of that bullpen and made it so successful this year. Just 46 hits given up and 58 innings pitched, 55 strikeouts. And may, may you'll get the first look at him. Then Culberson. Mayhew Culberson and Blackman. Rockies left the bases loaded last inning. They've had base runners in every frame. And they'll have a base runner here leading things off. DJ with his second hit of the night. Everything away, away, away. 41st hit up the middle for DJ LeMayu. It's 56 to right and 20 to left. Base hit right back up the middle for DJ. It'll be up to Charlie. It's, uh, the double switch pays off here for Walt Weiss. DJ had a stolen base earlier. Hoverson gets a sack bunt down. High fives in the dugout. Teammates, managers, and coaches appreciate the, the job by Culberson. Safe Flight Auto Glass, the place to go if you have a windshield that's damaged. SafeFlight.com. On the phone, 303 287 5000. Charlie Blackman over four tonight. A couple of strikeouts. Got a RBI out there, and he usually eats those up. 67 driven in. Side ball one. Quality swing, fouled it back one and one. He turned around yeah. and looked. He Mayhew. takes off, steals third. I can't Big believe. stolen base. I can't believe Thayer didn't get continue with his lower half turn towards second, but obviously the, the scouting reports say no. There's not some way that he would do this. Watch that front side turn. See, he looks back. I mean, he just takes off first move. Grandall, no chance. He made a perfect throw. Tenth stolen base, second tonight for DJ. Now the infield has to come in. That's a big stolen base there. And a 2 1 count on Charlie Blackman. The runner at third and only one out. A big, big, big run here for the Rockets. High fastball and on the hand swung a miss by Charlie. Even count of 2 and 2. Find a way to get it in play. Infield in, some good things can happen. Three and two. Up. Jerko backing up. And no chance to advance on that, obviously. So there are two outs, and LeMahieu remains at third base. Drew Stubbs coming up. Hey, September is remember your local dugout stores, so make sure you do that. All replica jerseys, including adult and ladies and youth sizes, are 25% off during Remember. 
at the Rockies uh, dugout store. Stop by any of our six locations today for this great deal. The Rockies dugout stores are the place for all things Rockies. Strike on Stubbs. Over three and a walk tonight for Drew. He's two for ten tonight with runners in scoring position. High heat, not swung out. Count one ball, two strikes. San Diego, two for four. Level two and two. Ford strikes on everything away from Drew, trying to avoid the power to the inner half of the plate. And this ball in the air to center field. Maven's going to have it, and Thayer will strand LeMayhew at third. Again, the Rockies leave a man on base. Back to man in scoring position. They lead 6 5, going to the eight. Top of the eighth inning, Rockies leading six to five over San Diego. Took two or three from the Giants, one last night behind Tyler Matzik, three to nothing, trying to make it two straight here against the Padres. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts when the Rockies score seven or more. The Rockies taco special and Adovino's first pitch to Solarte misses down low. Solarte a double back in the fourth inning. Jerko, then Grandal. Brothers on the left side, Nicasio on the right side. Uh, 
Uh, Aldovino has uh, gotten multiple outs. I mean, it, uh, multiple innings, I should say. He was able to get the strikeout to end the seventh. He'll have to get three here in the eighth. Two and two. Larte thought that pitch was down. Slider, he got the bad head out. That's typically what happened if you can start it to the middle and get it in. Solid contact made, difficult to keep fair. It off his leg. On the ground, deep short, and Culberson. Unable to come up with it, and that'll be an error, I'm sure, allowing Solarte to reach. Be his fifth on the year, but that ball had a lot of spin on it coming right at Charlie. He'll tell you I should make the play. But he was out. I mean, it looked like hit right off the end of the bat. Base hit. Did you say base hit? Yeah, they they yeah. ruled that base hit. So I guess if you're going to get the base hit on a backhand grab on one knee to more no then you obviously have to do it here also. Yeah. So Solarte is aboard. Jerk go at the plate. Jerko has swung it well tonight. Two hits, single and a double is driven into. For a guy who came into the ball game hitting 194 and playing every day. One and one. Earned a big contract in the offseason when he hit 23 home runs last year. Most in the National League by a second baseman. Doug just handed me an interesting note. And I'd like to see what their record was, maybe trailing after seven. But they are 45 and seven on the year when they score four or more runs. Doug's going to look up and let me know immediately what they have done. Uh, they're six and 64 when trailing after seven. The Padres and that, uh, somebody that comes from behind with this offense went down after seven. Usually they, usually they pitch pretty well, so that's why when they score four more, they win a lot of games. They're coming from behind tonight. Hopefully this uh, gets shut down pretty quick. Nobody out. Rockies up a run in the eighth inning. Run full. And he walked him. Now he got an issue. First and second. Nobody out. See how Bud Black will play this with Grandal. Again, this is a club. I know Grandal is your five-hole hitter, but he's hitting 209. This is not a club that uh, swings the bat well. See if he's bunny. 
Yeah, Jim Wright made that phone call down to the bullpen to check on the left-handed brothers, the right-hander Nicasio. Manager has a reason for letting things go any further. Let's see what Grand Dolls two for four against uh, Ottavino. Eleven home runs, 35 RBIs on the year. Runners in scoring position. He's hit a buck 53 with two home runs and 23 of those 35 runs driven in. Struck out 28 times. Now let's make it 29. What do you think? Sound like a good idea. I'd rather see him hit a ground ball to second. Well, now you're getting picked. I want an out. One I'm to make two is great. For two. Yeah, you're begging for two. That's great. I'm begging for one. See if this is hit hard enough. There's one. That's it. So it'll be first and third for Seth Smith with one out. Walt's going to pop out of the dugout, going to look down there, and he's going to the left hander, Rex Brothers. And Walt trying to mix and match through this ball game. Smith's only faced Rex twice. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. So Brothers will be next uh, against Seth Smith, 6 5, Colorado in the eighth. Ball game and now will face Rex Brothers in the eighth inning with the tying run at third. Does Monty Grandel's at first. Left handers this year, 289 against Rex. And struck out 19 and 83 at bats. Try to piece this inning together. You got one out. Professional hitter at the plate. Left hander on the mound that throws hard. See if he can get it by him, get it done. Good slider for strike one. That's such a huge key for any pitcher, but in particular with what Rex has gone through this year, walking more than six hitters per nine innings. Uh, 19 of the 19 walks, 19 strikeouts, and 83 at bats against left hand. And that's a base hit. Ties up the game at six. De La Rosa will get a no decision. And it's a whole new night. Seth Smith, as he did so frequently with the Rockies coming through late in the ball game.
slider, just a one-hand arm swing on a ball down and away. Not particularly a bad pitch by Rex Brothers. It's on the outer half. He's got a pretty good hitter up. Loops it into right field for a base hit to run scores. Now sudden first and second. Walt Weiss will go get the baseball. Nicasio will make his way to the mound. As Walt tries to piece his way through this eighth inning. With one out, two men on. Juan Nicasio is coming on for the Rockies. It'll be his 27th appearance. He's now working ex exclusively out of the bullpen. And Bud Black will counter. Cameron Maven was due up. Will Venable will be the pinch hitter. Four right handers out of the Rockies bullpen, two left handers out of the bullpen so far. The Rockies tied 6 6. There's been uh, 22 hits total in the ball game. A couple errors committed by San Diego. Will Venable is a pinch hitter this year. Seven for 21. Pretty good numbers. Not because De La Rosa will not get a decision here. It breaks his string of six straight winning starts at home. That also hurts the chances of with 68 wins to get to that uh, magic mark and pass Aaron Cook for the most wins. Look out. Two strike count on Venable. Former Princeton two sports star. When he went to Princeton, baseball was second on his uh, priority list. He was primarily a basketball player. Got two outs. Yeah, it took a high fastball and elevated a little bit out of the zone. They're wanting it in, but he took it away. But because at the 95, had no shot. Ball got right by Will Venable, a four seam fastball. Now you got to deal with the pesky Amarista. For two, hit by a pitch last inning, an 0 2 pitch by Tommy Canley, and then he was down for a while. He got up finally, went to first. Literally, it was about a four minute delay. Corey Spangenberg was summoned off the bench to pinch hit the very next pitch from Canley. Spangenberg hit over the left field wall. 
An opposite field two run home run to make it six to five at that point. It's now six six. Oh one on Amarista. Grandal started to take off and it's not that he's a great runner but he does have two stolen bases. He hasn't been caught yet. Rockies defensively are going to stay put. They're going to let you do what you want to. There's no way Grandal's taken off. How could he with a left outs. handed guy up? Why, but he just uh, don't, not sure what he was up to. Two and two. With the exception of Culberson, the Rockies bench completely full. As far as bench pinch hitters could would be, you got the left-hander Paulson, the switch hitting Enola from the left side. Two two. And he did it. So Nicasio strikes out Venable and Amarista, but the time run on the Smith hit comes in at six six. Center field naturally for Cameron Maybin. He pinch hit for him. Whole new outfield from the outfield that started the ball game for the Padres. Nick Vincent comes on. He's had a streak of 22 straight innings of uh, scoreless baseball. He'll face Morneau, Arenado, Dickerson in the bottom of the eighth in a 6 6 ball game. A lot of strikeouts, 47 and a third, 54 strikeouts, just nine walks. He is the guy you like to see work out of your bullpen with those kind of numbers. He has given up five home runs. Doesn't matter with uh, Bud Black. He's got his eighth inning guys, ninth inning guys, right and left matchups. Uh, he'll pick where he utilized certain guys like he did on Torres a couple of innings ago to, to bring in to get out of that inning. 
now it's up to Mr. Vincent to try to clean up here in the eighth inning. More this no game tied up 6 6. Yeah, more no saw him yesterday, George. Ground out second against him. He got two outs in the seventh inning for the Padres. Well, it seems like uh, about every two years they come up with one of these guys. They are Quackenbush, Vincent, it was Mike Adams before, Qualls before that, going back a few years. He's now the closer in Houston. This ball lined to center field. It's got to get down. It won't. That would have been the fifth hit for Morneau. Can't hit it any better than that. He's other than the home run, that's the hardest hit ball he's had tonight also. One out, Arenado. One for four. Troy Hawkins will come on to pitch tonight. Did nice job by Nicasio to clean up the eight. Vincent's fastball will be 88 to 92 miles an hour, but a lot of movement and pinpoint control down in the zone. Does a really good job with that in a slider. As you look at uh, Latroy warming up down in the bullpen. Last fastball at 90. Trying to get in on the hands of Arenado. Nolan fouls this one off as well, so it's a two strike count. Joe Whelan started, went just two and a third for the Padres in his return to the big leagues after a two plus year absence. He had Tommy John surgery. It's taken him a while to get back. And Jorge De La Rosa went five and two thirds. When he left, the Rockies had a six to three lead. But the pen. Has not been able to uh, maintain that. And it's a 6 6 game with two outs now in the eighth inning as Nolan goes down. Dickerson coming up. Everything down, then elevation above the hands. By the way, that game down in uh, Little Rock got a little crazy. Uh, the Arkansas Travelers have scored three in the seventh, three in the eighth. They took a seven-six lead. Tulsa just scored three in the ninth, and they lead at nine-seven. That's a different uh, type of ball game. And then yes. a crazy game going on. Aquino started. Roberts came in and gave up uh, a hit and a couple of walks and two-thirds. Craig Sitton came in. He's on the forty-man. An inning, one hit, three runs, none of them earned on a couple of walks. Cole White is on to pitch the ninth with a two-run lead. Trying to close it out and close out the first half. Uh, first part of that uh, playoff for the Tulsa Drillers. The Drillers have been in the playoffs six of the nine years since the Rockies have been in Tulsa. They just haven't been able to get past that first round. Be a pretty good accomplishment to do that. There's no doubles defense. And then there's no home run defense, and that's what Will Venable's playing right now. Look how deep he is in center field. Ball's hit over his head. It's going to end up in Greeley. It's about right. <laughs> yeah, late. Man, I mean, to be a defensive alignment, even there are all the other outfielders, they're all deep too. That's a base hit for Dickerson. He may get a double because it's going to take a while for uh, Smith to get to the ball. He's going to try. He's out of the second. I didn't mean it literally. So Dickerson did try to stretch it, and he's thrown out by Seth Smith. We'll go to the ninth, tied at six.
online only at southwest.com. By Jeep, visit jeep.com to learn more. By the Colorado Department of Wildlife, money generated from hunters and anglers creates jobs and protects wildlife. So give one a hug, learn more at hugahunter.com. And by Dodge, visit dodge.com for your local Dodge dealer today. In lower downtown Denver, the Rockies six, the Padres six. Top of the ninth inning to center field. We go and Mark's down. Mark? All right, Drew, coming up on the Toyota postgame show, we're going to tell you about the guy that's above average, Justin Morneau, with his first four-hit game of the season, trying to win that batting title. So he's gone above average tonight. And also Fortnite, the fort, Mike McHenry. A couple of hits, a couple of ribbies, a home run. Those two guys have six of the Rockies' 13 hits, but there's work to be done. So we go back to the ninth inning to Drew and George. Guys? All right, Mark, thank you very much. LaTroy Hawkins is on. Tie ball game in the ninth. You see your closer at home. And the Rockies have used since De La Rosa went five and two thirds. Brown went a third. Canely a third. Flande a third. Ottavino two thirds. Brothers one hitter. Nicasio a full inning. Let me correct that. Nicasio went two thirds. Mm -hmm. And, and LaTroy Hawkins. Man, LaTroy coming into this ball game going to make his 50th appearance on the year. Three and two overall record. 22 of 24 save opportunities. Get a couple of left handed hitters to start things off. Corey Spangenberg will be first. He hit the pinch hit two run home run against Canely and then stayed in the ball game. A deep drive left field that uh, Corey thought he had a shot at just over the fence, but a home run nonetheless, his second. In his big league career, and he's got five RBIs now. Ball and a strike. A little bit low at ninety four. Yeah, it was very close at first base, and I think he was out on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl. Morneau gets to the baseball. Perfect lead to Hawkins. Slowed down, put it in the mitt. And here comes Hawkins with the long foot size 14. Put it down. Got it. No complaints out of the Padre dug up. One out down low on Jake Gobert. Second at bat for Gobert. Rivera has stepped out in the on deck circle. Eight pitchers used in a ball game that you were up. From the point the Rockies were up six to three, they've used seven pitchers. And the Padres have scored in each of the last five innings. They just chipped away. He went. Gobert. 
two outs in the ninth inning for Hawkins. Well, a very good pitch. Got a guy crowding up on top of the plate. Uh, aimed for the inside part of the plate at 94 miles an hour. Tough to catch up to. Nay Rivera will pinch it. We're down to one bench player, and that is Moore, the other catcher. It's hard to do usually this time of year in a nine inning game. Very hard Bounded to do. Stop there at Nato and he throws to first, gets a little help from Morneau. And it's a one, two, three, nine. Great play by Aaron Nato. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. The Rockies looking for just one. Six, six. Padres 14 to 9. Mike McHenry will lead things off against the closer now for the Padres, Kevin Quackenbush. Quackenbush making his 49th appearance. McHenry and then a pinch hitter, DJ LeMahieu after that. Joaquin Benoit had been closing games, but he's got a tired arm. He's going to be down for around 10 days. Henry a home run earlier. Hold on and missed. You got the Rockies going with a solo home run to center in the second inning. Rafael Eno is going to be the pinch hitter next. Well, at least he's out there right now. He's got Ben Paulson available. There's a slider on the corner. It's the demeanor, the mentality, not necessarily the big velocity like you see on a lot of closers. Mariano Rivera was one of the best, and at the last three or four years of his career, he didn't have the great velocity, but pinpoint control. That mentality Quackenbush has to pitch late in games, just like Benson. They feel invincible. They think they can go out and make every pitch they want to make. You got the mean attitude, the mean look on the mound. 
Evan Polson also with the bat. 0 2 on Mike. Oh, That's good, good, good swing on a tough pitch. Yeah, I, I thought that pitch, George, was a little too good. 0 2. What do you say? Yeah, it's just going to come right at you on the slider. That's what it was. It's moving away from him, so you're eliminating some of the power out of it. It might reach a little bit because of that high fastball he threw earlier in the count. Tulsa did win it 9 7. They'll move on. Not a big fan of purpose pitches. You know, when you sit there and they think, oh, it's an 0 2 pitch, don't give them anything to hit. Okay, well, let's just make it 1 and 2 then. Yeah, the, the waste pitch that's not even tantalizing, I agree with you. No, I, don't, I just don't like it. The, four, the, the waste pitch that's four feet over your head. Yeah, what good does that do? It's a waste of time. Rob Scahill is getting loose down in the Rockies bullpen. Hope you don't see him. I like you, Rob, but I hope the Rockies win it right here. 2-2 Two -two to McHenry. Hard ground ball right to the second baseman. Jerko one out. Now, with nobody on, you're going to sacrifice. You'd send Enona up. I'm sorry, with somebody on, you would send Enona up to pinch it. Instead, you're going to give Paulson the shot to hit it out. So Noah's called back and Paulson will swing the bat. He has been nothing short of sensational. But talking about no idea. Hitting this year, Paulson. Yeah, he's done all right. Four for six. You get me a home run and two RBIs. How about a big swing right now, Ben? One strike pitch to Ben Paulson. Strike three on the outside corner. Two outs, nobody on for the Rockies in the bottom of the ninth. Pretty good paint on the outside corner and put it with a lot of sink movement away from Ben Paulson's power. Now they would be that middle half in. It does catch the corner of the plate for strike three. He's two for four this evening. Two singles. Also has two stolen bases.
two and one on DJ. Swing you normally don't see from DJ, and that was an aggressive chase and a high fastball. Yeah, that was more of a pull swing, and that, that's not DJ. That was uh, that was a rare, you know got big a home run looking <laughs> cut. Well out of the strike zone, he just tried to to get after it. I mean, Quackenbush has been impressive because he he pitches to all areas of the strike zone, up, down, in, and out. Running fastball at 92 on the hands. in the bottom of the ninth inning it's hunting four hours in lane and it was moving fairly well the first five innings or so and DJ strikes out will go extra innings at Coors Field Rocky six Padres six Brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Rockies had a 6-2 lead in this ball game with Jorge De La Rosa on the mound when he departed. It was 6-3. And since that time, the Rockies have allowed the Padres to catch it. So we go extra innings. Rob Scahill will face Solarte Jerko. Rondal at the top of the tenth, and we'll tell you that the Rockies are six and six in extra inning games. The Padres have been good; they're ten and four. Rob Scahill's going to come on now, and he's going to make his sixth appearance this year. He does have a win that happened at Wrigley Field. First batter efficiency, 60 percent. The opponents hit 185 against him. He's going to deal with uh, the heart of this lineup. So Solarte, Jed. Jerko, Grandal, and Seth Smith. That was between innings. And I'd love to give you a comment as to what he was talking to New York about. But we have no idea because the uh, information was not shared up here. So. Can't expound on that video at all. I will tomorrow. That battle revealed. 
that doesn't work good, you go down and talk to the umpires. They're all your friends. Solarte takes strike one. Solarte two for four tonight, a single and a double. Good fastball, 95. First offering from Scahill to get ahead 0 and 1. That hurt. That got him right on the hands. That's like that thing you see at Christmas for 1999, the kitchen mannequin. He got right in the kitchen. Fastball in, strike one. Fastball, four seam, come right in on the hands. Tried to get his hands through. Instead, he splintered the bat. Jerko two for three and a walk. Padres got runs in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth to get even. Two and one. You know, one of the reasons I think Walt probably went to Skay Hill, he's pitched multiple innings at the Triple A level this year. Two on Jerko. Outside half of the plate, eliminate the power, and he chased it, swinging a miss, straight three. Two outs in the tenth. Grandal coming up next. Fastball had a little cut to the end of this, and uh, Jerko chased after this thing. Good job, Rob Scahill. Two quick outs. That's a ball in. Colberson will lead off next inning for the Rockies in the top of the order. Blackman and Stubbs. Nicely, just off the plate, evidently, according to Quinn Walcott. Fine, an account two one now. And then according to the Ford strike zone, it was off the plate, but I thought a pretty good pitch by Scale. Soft fly ball, shallow right center, and it'll drop. And that'll bring up Seth Smith. Yeah, Smith's the guy that took the slider from Brothers and on a pretty good pitch flipped it into right field to tie this ball game.
You know, a good job by scale to pound these left handers hard in. You know, a lot of these guys want to have the ball out away from them where they can do something with it. And handle that pitch a lot easier than they can the fastball on the inner half of the plate. Now that doesn't mean just because of crowd. You think the inner half is that uh, kind of middle third. You want that inner third on that guy. Not allow him to extend. Rob's throwing 93 to 96 tonight. Go back in there one more time. Try to crowd him. It's going to work. Yep. Come on, DJ. He's got it. We'll go to the bottom of the 10th inning. Skate Hill navigates the 10th inning with that incident. Kevin Quackenbush will stay out on the mound. A lot of times when a guy's closing, that's all they get, one inning. Yeah, but he hasn't been doing it much. Benoit's a guy. I mean, this is the guy closing of late, but Benoit's been the guy, but he's down with a little bit of a tender arm at this point. And Quackenbush has gone uh, more than one inning six times this year. The last time, though, all the way back to July 23rd. Charlie Colbert's going to get the first shot at him here. Second at bat for Charlie. It'll be his first official at bat. Depending on what he does, he had a sack bunt his first time up. Fouled off. With the slider, it's 0 and 2 on Charlie. Four home runs in this game, two for each side. Spanchenberg is second, Medica is eighth for the Padres, Morneau is 15th, McHenry is seventh for the Rockies. One and two. Dodgers in the ninth inning. Leading Arizona at home five to two. Cleveland beat the White Sox three to one. Boston over Toronto. Baltimore do today. Dougie, they lose three two to Tampa. Strike out for the first out of the inning. The Phillies beat the Nationals three to one. Behind 
Well, you can turn the day around with one swing of the bat. Charlie's 0 for 5 with a couple of punch outs. Rockies have just one hit since the seventh inning, two hits since the sixth inning. They've left 11 on base. And they left 11 on in the first seven innings. That's a base hit. Well, with this defense playing so deep, Corey Dixon, Dickerson tried it a minute ago on a line drive base hit to right field to Seth Smith. Because of how deep they're playing, you try to advance into scoring position. Now he was thrown out. And uh, Will Venable was on the fly on that line drive hit up the middle. They're still going to play deep in the outfield. Stubbs at first, or excuse me, Stubbs at the plate. Blackman with 25 stolen bases at first base. And Grandal, who has not thrown out a lot of guys, now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's him. There's only been three attempts with Quackenbush on the mound, and they've been successful one time. Pickoff throws that we've seen lately. Well, I think the one earlier probably should have been caught over first base. This one is really kind of a safety pick. Stubbs takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Cruz 0 for 4 and a walk. Came around on the Two run home run back in the third by Justin Morneau. And another ball again. in the dirt. <laughs> okay, you know what? I've had enough work on the picks, okay? Let's get them up a little bit. The crowd's booing. They should actually be encouraging yeah. him to pick. Throw it again. That's a little more. Uh, that was a little more difficult, too. Two. And I think the first one probably given Charlie a little bit of room, but there was four pickoffs to first base. The last pitch on the knees on the black on the corner. A pitcher's pitch, as they like to call it. Move, George. Everybody yeah. yelled balk. Yeah. Well, that's why they took it out where he couldn't do it anymore. So everybody quit yelling. At him. <laughs> <laughs> Two strikes on Stubbs, one out. And this ball's looked at the deep center field. Is it deep enough? Not quite. Hit it about 415 feet. Needed to hit it about 420. Well, Justin Morneau's had a big night. Make it an even larger one. Four for five tonight. The only time the Padres have gotten him out, it was a screaming liner to center field. Not going to happen here. We're going to go to the 11th. Tied up at six.
Turkey, feed your wild side. With George Frazier, I'm Drew Goodman. We go to the 11th inning. Will Venable is going to lead things off against Rob Scahill in the 11th. Here's how we have arrived at the 11th, tied at six. Mike McHenry in second against Joe Whelan made it 1-0 as he splashed one into the pond in center field. And then a two-run shot off the facade of the second deck from Justin Morneau. Rockies were up 3-0. They led 4-0. They led 6-2. And then Spangenberg would make it 6-5 with a pinch hit opposite field two-run home run. And Seth Smith, the villain tonight, he tied it up against Rex Brothers with a base hit. And that's why we're still playing late into the evening. Second inning of work for Rob Scahill. Gave up a single, pop single to Grandal last inning. Otherwise was very good in the 10th. Will Venable came on in the 8th inning. As a pinch hitter and stayed in the ball game in center field. He struck out. His first at bat. Venable, after a very good year last year, has had a tough year, as have so many of the Padres at the plate. Will last year hit 268 with 22 home runs. And that's lined in front of Venable, or excuse me, in front of Blackman for a base hit. Venable came into the ball game. 200 with a 221 average and just six home runs this year. Now Marista will be bunting, you would assume. Arenado's going to shorten up. Good speed at first at Venable, good speed at the plate in Amarista. This is a double play ball. Wow. He swung away. Double play. 4 6 3. Great job by Culberson. Get rid of the baseball despite getting spun pretty good by Venable. Yeah, he shocked came in. they did not bunt there. He came in extremely hard. I'm shocked too that they didn't bunt there, but you see Venable come in on him. He's going to go out of his way to get into Charlie Culberson. As a matter of fact, probably could have called an automatic out as he rotated the body to the outfield. Not to the bag. I'm still baffled though. Why wouldn't you have punted there? And Marista hitting eighth in your lineup. Unless they thought about stealing and there was a miss sign, a hit and run, all kinds of things could have happened there. Here's Spangenberg and he has a base hit. Don't we'll allow Jake Gobert to hit. Rockies in the 11th will have Arenado, Dickerson, and McHenry. Rockies the bullpen again. They've used nine pitchers tonight. Belial has been used. Bassett has been used on the right side. Friedrich on the left side. Now Friedrich rolled his ankle pretty good a couple days ago, and still a question mark. Rockies on their bench still have a lot of options. Barnes has been used. McBride, Parker. Jackson Williams, your backup catcher, so you're less likely to use him. And Noah has not been used. One and one on 
Dover. Garces and Erlin on the left side available for the Padres. Alvarez, Boyer, Hahn available. Benoit's on the roster, but he's not available. What's that now on deck, sir? Is that Clayton Richards? Cashner, oh, that's Andrew it. Cashner. I'm sorry. Clay, Clay, Clayton Richards, he's gone, gone. Cashner. Cashner's up there. He, well, he swings the bat all right. Because the only one he's got left is Moore. That's the last catcher he has. So he's not going to use it. Did you start a new scorebook? Did I? No, yeah, we just making sure all the different names. No, I'm, there's so <laughs> many names that I was double checking on another scorecard. This game's got a long time. Use a lot of guys. I mean, it was like their bench is empty. You don't have any more hit. They got nothing. They're done. Pitch out. Nothing going on. Two and two. That's how crazy it is. Hard to run out of players in September. Especially, hard to especially in 11 innings. Well, you take your shot as a manager to try to win when you can. I mean, that's what you did. And that's why he had used so many guys out of his bullpen. Walt used so many guys out of his bullpen. Trying to get the matchups, trying to get the outs, trying to get guys in a position to get a base hit. 3-2 and it's fouled off. Couple more innings, Dougie. It's a pizza run, buddy. <laughs> Call somebody. <laughs> Bring a pizza, please, to Coors Field. <laughs> yeah, second level press area. Let me tell you, they're closed. This is back up the middle and on through a base hit with the runner going. Spangenberg is going to get to third. About this, and, and this and is the last thing Bud Black wanted to do. First and third, two outs to send up a starting pitcher. Yeah, you know, we haven't seen Cashner since earlier in the year, but I remember remarking at the time, Cashner is going to give you a legitimate at bat. He can swing it. Well, he's hitting 125 on the season, you which, know, he's is, got the, which is not good, but he can swing it. He can swing it a little bit. He has 13 strikeouts and 24 at bats this year. 195 career average for Cashman. So out of their rotation, Andrew Cashner is pinch hitting with the go ahead run at third base in the 11th. Well, if you have a full 40 man roster and you don't have anybody to move to the 60 to keep continuing to add to it, what do you do? I mean, you're kind of stuck. There's nobody else to go to. Well, 
Don't do that. Don't throw a wild pitch. That's how Baltimore won today on a wild on a pass ball. That's how they lost today on a pass ball. Tampa won that game. Two and one. This ball lined to center field. Stubbs will move back and make the catch. Runners left at first and third will go to the bottom of the 11th. The Rockies and Padres even up at six. The Rockies will have Nolan Arenado to lead things off, looking for one precious run. Jesse Hahn is now out on the mound well, had been for the Padres. To, he had been pushed out of the rotation to the bullpen. Seven and three on the year, 3.00 run average, 72 innings, 54 hits, 68 strikeouts. Right hander is going to come into the ball game. Fifty percent on that first batter efficiency, so hopefully Nolan gets something going and get some uh, good things happening here. He was starting for the Padres. He's been back and forth four times between uh, the minor leagues and the big leagues. He's done a good job as a starter. Nolan, go down and get one of those patented low sliders and drive it out of the ballpark in right center field. Good curveball for a strike on Nolan. Well, that's his patent pitch, is the breaking ball, a very good curveball. Routine ground ball to short. Amarista throws out Nolan. I'll bring up Dickerson. Dickerson tonight, couple of singles, two for five. Long games helping Corey get plate appearances in his pursuit of so I have enough at bats to be officially ranked. And a 
Base hit to center. Third hit for Dickerson. McHenry, home run, single, walk, walk, and a ground ball to second. See if Mike can run into one. Dickerson, Doug just did the, uh, Bath. Dickerson with 417 plate appearances needs 85 more over the final 21 games or 4.05 per game. Pretty close to be able to do that. If there's a chance. It appears Nick Massett is starting to throw down in the Rockies bullpen. The Rockies can't win it here. He would come on. He would come on to pitch. Hahn concerned that Dickerson may run. And a good reason to think that way too. Dickerson on the season, eight stolen bases, been caught six times, but he's pretty pretty quick player. Another right breaking there. ball. Two good ones in a row to be 0-2. Felt like that ball may have been a little bit out on the Mike Shaw Subaru Super Mo. One finger overlapping the top of the other. Not so traditional, but making sure he's getting on it. Pretty good pitch. Run at first with one out in the 11th, and a strikeout of McHenry for the second out of the inning. Big hook again. He got a couple, one fastball well out of the strike zone, and then he got a nasty curveball to go with it. Barnes is going to pinch hit here. This is the pitcher's spot. This is what he has really excelled at this year. Still at uh, 28 years old. And those guys you look at is uh, waiting for that everyday opportunity. 249, 7 and 22 on the season. But as a pinch hitter, 16 for 56. Two home runs, five RBIs. Oh for 17 against the Padres this year though. So he's due. Trades have had Brandon's numbers or number looking at those numbers. Chased up high. He's going to take a walk. Uh, hanging breaking ball. 
Welcome to Mike Shaw Subaru Super Bowl right here coming right out of the hand. There's the curveball grip trying to spin it. And it just flew up out of the hand. Brandon read it. He just couldn't connect it. What a big old powerful swing. Though. Two strike count on Barnes. Jesse Hahn ready. And it's a pitch out that almost drifted over the plate. Maybe trying to get Barnes to take a swing at it. And another check on Dickerson. Almost got to focus and think curveball. Two outs in the 11. No, oh, he went fastball. I think Barnes probably looking curveball, able to fight that fastball off. Good job, Brandon Barnes. the inning on a punch out he strikes out two in the inning so we'll go to the 12 still tied at six at Coors Field. Left with a six to three lead after five and two thirds. But the Rockies got caught by the Padres. We're now in the 12th inning. Nick Bassett will take over. 
It's his 47th appearance. And the Rockies have thrown out this roster of arms after De La Rosa. Brown for a third, Canely for a third. He gave up two runs on one hit. It was a two run home run. Flande a third. Adovino two thirds gave up a run. Brothers came in, faced one hitter. That was Smith who singled and tied the score at six. Nicasio went two thirds. Hawkins a clean ninth. Scahill the last two, no runs on four hits. Didn't walk anybody, struck out one. And now Nick Massett. That's uh, nine out of the bullpen if you're counting. Ten pitchers tonight with De La Rosa. And the first pitch is inside. Ball one on Solarte. And that ties the Rockies record all time for pitchers used in a game. They used 10 on three different occasions. August of 2000 against Atlanta in 12 innings. September of 06 in Chicago against the Cubs in 14 innings. And then they matched a major league record in 07. In September of 07 against these Padres using 10 pitchers in a nine inning game. This is really unusual when you think about the fact, and that's ball four on four pitches. Well, lose track of what's going on on the field. Solarte walks on four pitches. It's really remarkable when you think that your ace is on the mound, a guy who usually gives you great length. In Jorge De La Rosa. Jed Jerko. And that's five straight out of the zone. So Mike McHenry will run out to the mound. Come on, Michael, settle down. Bring in a starter. Rob Scale pitched pretty well tonight. Two innings, four hits, a strike in, kept things tight. Glad to see that for Rob. That's a ball six straight out of the zone for Bassett. Well, Jim right off of his chair starting to walk. And now it gets squeezed a little bit. That's ball three. Yeah, I don't want to see where this last pitch was. Maybe on that four, four strike zone. Where was it? It caught the zone. Apparently that late tie and tail didn't get the strike call. We yeah, have a little bit of a make good here. Jerko walks off on that one. Try. Fly ball center field. So Grandal will come up. Grandal a line out. A ground out a walk. Reached on a fielder's choice and also a single. It's now the second longest game unofficially of the season to that six hour 27 minute marathon in Chicago longest game ever at Wrigley Field. Ball one on Grandal.
That may have been high. Yeah, just a little bit high. It caught plenty of the plate. It was the elevation of the pitch that uh, Grandal was questioning at Wilco. Been here a long time tonight, too. <laughs> Breaking ball misses two and two. Seth Smith. Side on Smith ball one. Smith went to Oakland, traded down to the Padres. And as George mentioned earlier, signed an extension. Would have been their most effective offensive player for most of the year, but he doesn't play against lefties. And it, and it's somewhat puzzling, and I don't Question Bud Black. I have the utmost respect for Bud Black. He's a heck of a manager. But they don't have much going offensively. I'd rather see this guy take his hacks left on left most of the time than some of the other options. Old foul. Smith this year is hitting 268 against lefties, 280 against righties. So it's. Mm -hmm. I know it's always frustrated him. Kind of got typecast early in his career, George. He's a platoon guy. Has a great swing, can really hit righties. Yeah, hit. and a very good pinch hitter beyond the seventh inning. He got tight cast into that. I mean, he was very, very good. Everybody remembers that. And what he did here was the numbers he was talked about against left handers. Only uh, eight RBIs, 32 bat at bats, no home run. One and two with two outs. Runner going. Strike three, locked him up. Good pitch by Massey. Good job after the leadoff walk. So we'll go to the bottom of the 12. Rockies need one.
it up at 6 6 and Seth Smith singled off of Rex Brothers back in the eighth inning to tie it up. Rockies had a lead of 4 0, a lead of 6 2 tonight, and could not hold it. But they'll try to win it here in the 12th inning. DJ LeMay, who will be first, then Charlie Culberson and Charlie Blackman. Second inning of work for Jesse Hahn. A curveball fastball. That's what he showed in the first inning that he worked. Uh, had a couple of strikeouts after a hit by Corey Dickerson. into second with a lead off double. Tell you what, look fastball, took advantage of it. He's throwing 14 pitches, 11 for strikes. You know he's around the zone. Tried to come right at him with a heater, and DJ took it right down the right field line. He shot this ball so quickly by Gobert down into the corner. And then it ricocheted off. Seth Smith, he knows this corner. He's got to respect it if it comes off and makes that run around the corner. DJ able to get to second base, and now the bunt defense gets set up for this ball club. Charlie already successful with a sacrifice bunt back in the seventh inning. Rockies are two for 11. Charlie Blackman in the on deck circle has been a hero numerous times this year, and he'll get another chance, hopefully. Here in a minute. Going up that third base side. <laughs> that looked really I'm tell you what, it was bad high. Come on. That's awful. That, that, that's, that's bad. You know what? That's really bad. A curveball, and you're going to call that a strike? After they held it? Really? I mean, he caught it, Mask. And it was well, a curveball. And, and he'll get scrutinized over this by the league office. I mean, they'll say something to him, but he strikes out. Great ball. Tremendous ball. He may have trouble getting it. Oh, no. Waltz uh, looking very quickly. Uh, EY just pointed immediately at the dugout. Well, you come out because after the seventh inning, you know, take a look at it. I thought with the naked eye they just got him. But you go out anyhow. Yep, did get him. I mean, it's like a heels what it is. Great bunt by Culberson. Yeah, a really good bunt. I mean, that's what he was there for. Great job, Charlie. Two times tonight. Nice job. But Black is going to go get a left-hander now to face Blackman. Blackman on Monday had the walk-off hit to drive in McHenry to beat the Giants and take a bat. <laughs> he's, he's borrowing. I don't know what he's doing. I've just been told we can't see, but I've just been told there is no yeah, left-hander down, down there. They've got two lefties fans. available. So what are they going to do? Oh, you know what? They're probably getting that. He went through that, would he? What, load the bases? Is that what you're thinking? Well, yeah, but I mean, he uh, put five guys on the infield. We're going to see what he's going to do here. This is no longer just a meeting. This is a summit. Yeah. Well, Bud's getting it set up somehow. Bud's a great teacher also, and... and Watch this. Watch how he's going to set this yeah, up because he's taking Gover to off of. Now, now, hold on a second. Oh, do, yeah, they're going to play five in the infield. Yeah, they brought Spank. Uh, who did they bring him from left field? Gover. No. Oh, Spank. No, Spangenberg. Spangenberg's at shortstop. All right. Wow. This is interesting. Yep, so you have is. two guys in the outfield, Venable and Smith. And we're going to cover up every single hole we can cover up here. And you can't. Let me ask it. I mean, this is a crazy. Yeah, why not walk Charlie? Okay. 
Yeah, you walk Charlie and then you go right on right. I mean, I, I, I could well, imagine he pitching to Charlie. Right. All right, Stubbs has been a hero enough. He can be a hero again. That's why I'm looking at it. What do you think? Unless he walks Stubbs too, which you're not going to do to face Morneau. <laughs> Now let's see how they line up now. Well, I, they would have I done it. They, they got to so keep it the same way. That's why he went out. Well, you'd think he would, but I mean, I, I, I'm not sure why you wouldn't put somebody in short center, you know, to prevent catch a soft fly ball. That's the only question I have. Well, they're sliding. It doesn't matter where you slide to. They're, yeah, they're just telling him to leave left field alone. I mean, it, it, you know, there's so many options here for this to happen. Charlie will probably go ahead and steal second. He should. There he goes. Now to bring everybody in, scoot them in, soft liners. You know, everybody's trying to pull them in now, pull in the outfield. A little soft fly ball, you got to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're barking pretty hard. Wolcott can't wait for this game to get over with. Hopefully it's going to get over here in just a sec. Hard shot, base hit, ball game over. In 12 innings, Drew stops. Wins it with a single and drives in DJ LeMahieu, who started the inning with a double. 7 6 Colorado. Their eighth walk off win of the year. Bassett gets the win. Hot takes the loss. Well, if you're going to play five hours, you ought to win. Makes it a whole lot nicer, oh, doesn't sure. it? Yeah, it does. Good. Absolutely it does. Our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. I think you just witnessed it. Drew Stubbs against five infielders and he spoke the curveball from Jesse Hahn. Pass Salonte. And LeMahieu scores the game winner. Rockies win it 7 6 in 12 innings tonight, the second longest game of the year. They've taken the first two of this three-game set with the Padres. Again, Nick Massett is the winner. And Jesse Hahn takes the loss. Well, Drew Stubbs is downstairs. And uh, Drew? Yes. You try to win games in nine, but if you can uh, win them in 12, you'll take that also. Yeah, exactly. Uh, win's a win. Sometimes they're a little harder to come by than others, but uh, we'll take it in 12. Hey, let me ask you very quickly, because it, it's visually, it's got to be a little odd when you look out there and there are five infielders. Did that mess with you at all, or you just focus on, you know, finding a pitch to hit? You know, I, th I think more than anything, you just try to find a pitch to hit, and just because they're all in the infield and, and uh, you know, pinched in tight, you just try to get a pitch that's up and elevated, and you know, even if you got to jam yourself to bloop it over, just get something to the outfield grass. And uh, you know, for me, he threw three straight curveballs, and, and the third one, you know, I got a little bit out front of, but found a hole with it. Thank God. Well, I was looking at the first two breaking balls he threw. I'm thinking, all right, you're gonna, not going to see anything but hooks this hole at bat. And you just answered the question. Uh, with that third hook and a pitch you could hit with. You're looking around like you think somebody's going to get you. It's happened before, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good thing when it happens, yeah, right? Yeah, but uh, maybe they'll give me a break with the long game. Yeah, yeah there it, you go. That would be nice. Hey, Drew, uh, one other thought. It, Jorge was going for his 14th victory. He's cruising along, and then it turns into a really peculiar game, didn't it? It did. Um, you know, I think the, uh, the September call-ups enabled this game to get really stretched out. 
you know, they're working every matchup they can, uh, pinch hitters, relief pitchers, and so forth. So um, it played out to be a long game. But uh, like I said earlier, if it takes 12 innings or, or whatever uh, to get a win, we'll take it. No, it's always nice when you can shake hands, have a smile on your face when you're heading inside, regardless whether the spread's cold, hot, doesn't matter, right? It makes That's it right. easier to get out of bed in the morning. That's right, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the quick turnaround tomorrow, like you said, it'll be a little easier, I think, after the win. Yeah, shower up, and then you're due back in 20 minutes. Drew, thanks for coming <laughs> right, by, Thanks, man. guys. All right, take it easy. Drew Stubbs, a hero tonight, knocking in the game winner in the 12th inning, and he got out of there unscathed. We didn't want to ask one more hey, question. Did because, hey. Well, Barnes is normally looming. You got to get the alarm, the alarm off in center field right now, guys. Go out and get it and get it going out there in center field for us, huh? How about it? Yes. We can do that for you guys. The Toyota Post Game Show is on the way next as the Rockies win this one 7 6 in 12 innings. We're still here. Huey's here. Sully's here. We're ready. We're going to talk about it. Stay with us. You're still here.